Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Kartik, one of the co-founders of ETH Global, and welcome to the Avid Grant DAO Summit. So all of you are watching this thing on ethglobal.tv. Um, this is the live platform we're using for all of the talks today. Uh, keep in mind that as we uh, run the rest of the talks, if you have any questions for our panelists, you can ask all those questions uh, directly on the chat. And also everybody who logs in to the chat will get a POAP NFT token for your participation. So be sure to say hi and ask any questions. Um, this event is organized by ETH Global. And for those of you who don't know what ETH Global is, uh, ETH Global is an organization with a very simple mission. Our goal is to get thousands of developers into the Web3 ecosystem. And we primarily do this by running hackathons and summits. So ETH Online is our biggest event of the year. And so far in ETH Global's history, we have over 1,150 hackers from 77 different countries participating in the hackathon from 19 different time zones. On top of that, we're doing an incredible set of summits to talk about everything that's happening in our ecosystem. We had our first summit last Friday, which was on NFTs and creators. Today is the Ave Grants DAO Summit. Uh, tomorrow will be our Governance and DAO Summit. And next week is filled with, or the next few weeks are also filled with amazing summits. So we're going to cover the Compound Grants ecosystem on the 7th. On October 8th, uh, we're going to talk about everything that's happening in the world of DevTools. And October 15th is going to be the finale of our hackathon, where we're going to talk about all the top projects, as well as talk about the future of ETH2. So let's get into the Ave Grants ecosystem. Uh, we have an amazing set up, uh, uh, yep, just set lined up today. Uh, we're going to kick us off with uh, a couple of remarks from Stani from Ave. Then we're going to go into a panel around just the, the landscape around how grants are set up in the DeFi ecosystem. Then Trios is going to talk about the feature of Ave grant style. And then we're going to talk about what does it mean to successfully receive a grant from the Ave ecosystem. And we're going to have a showcase on some of the incredible projects uh, that have been funded by the Ave Grants program. And they're going to talk about what they're working on and how you may get involved. And then lastly, we'll have Shreyas uh, give some closing remarks on how they are thinking about the future of Ave Grants. And there'll be a wrap. So before we kick off with our very first talk, I want to welcome Stani, who is the founder and CEO of Ave, to share some opening remarks on the future of the Ave ecosystem. So without further ado, let's welcome Stani. Thank you, Kartik, uh, for the uh, great introdu introduction. And it's uh, amazing that uh, we have been able to have this opportunity to organize uh, uh, the grants, uh, uh, Ave Grants DAO Summit. And uh, I think ETH Global has done a lot of uh, good work in terms of like expanding the uh, developer ecosystem and culture around uh, not just in Ethereum but in the Web3 space in uh, general. And uh, the Ave Grants DAO Summit is is quite important, especially like because like the objective of Grants DAO is to uh, propagate uh, culture and uh, especially the developer culture around the different ecosystems that we have in uh, not just decentralized finance but in Web3. And especially with the Ave Grants DAO's uh, mission uh, is, is pretty much to uh, propagate this culture within the Ave ecosystem. And grants can be anything essentially. They're, they can be a uh, small uh, pull request into current infrastructure that there is in, in the, the protocol, uh, the, the, the front end that is uh, community governed at the moment or any other kind of a tooling that relates into the uh, ecosystem, or it can be just something that benefits uh, beyond what uh, Ava is today. And I would say kind of like the vision for everything is that uh, these protocols and all the tools and everything that is created in open uh, source fashion uh, should be owned and governed by the community and should be something that will help and inspire uh, newcomers and other developers to build new things and also educate themselves and learn more about what is decentralization, why it's important, and, and why, we, why we need to uh, nurture this uh, culture. And decentralization is especially important because uh, not for the uh, perspective of being able to build things uh, anywhere from any part of the world and contribute code, but also being able to participate and govern these protocols. Because if we don't actively govern the protocols, uh, essentially, we lose the power of decentralization, which means having a wider consensus on protocols 
that in the future will uh, be maybe servicing uh, hundreds of millions or even billions of users. So uh, this is kind of like a short introduction on, on uh, the, uh, the Grand Style Summit. And during this summit, it's important uh, that we are able to give you as much as context on, on what are, uh, what are uh, these Grand Styles are actually doing and what kind of uh, grants you can actually apply, uh, what, what kind of grants you can apply for different kinds of projects that you're building, how to contribute, uh, and how to find also friends to help you to contribute into. And we'll delve into multiple uh, grant style programs. Uh, uh, and that's about it. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for that uh, intro, Stani. And uh, I think this is a perfect segue for our very first panel. So for this, I'm going to introduce uh, four amazing people. Stani from Ave, who's already here. We'll uh, invite Robert Lechner from Compound, Mia Boris from the Uniswap grant seeker system and moderating this chat will be Imran from DeFi Alliance. And uh, we'll kind of cover what the entire DeFi grant landscape looks like and some of the lessons learned. So without further ado, let's welcome all of our amazing panelists and let them uh, kick this off. Awesome, thank you so much, Kartik. Um, and so I, I, was, I was a part of the grant, uh, obviously grants DAO and I've been interviewing many of the applicants there. And what I've realized is that uh, many people don't really know how to interact with grants DAOs. So maybe, you know, we'll start with, could you talk a bit about the importance of establishing a grants DAO and uh, how has that been so far from a process perspective? And maybe we could start with you, Robert. Yeah, so I think the importance is extremely high. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's Aave, Compound, every new protocol being built by community members. Once a protocol gets to a certain size, um, the number of contributors starts to scale far beyond the initial team that created the protocol or, you know, application. And so in order to organize this, at some point you have to have, you know, a different type of structure. Um, you know, one approach that, you know, some organizations have tried is having, you know, a central company or foundation organize grants. But I think for a crypto native protocol like Aave or Compound or MakerDAO, what I think will work best is actually having a decentralized process to award grants to the community. And there's a blurry set of lines between, you know, ongoing participants, contributors, you know, um, RFP, you know, and bounty hunters. But at the end of the day, you know, if you have a global and decentralized community of people contributing to a protocol, the easiest way to organize that is with, you know, a DAO type structure um, in which, you know, applications and participants can interact directly with a DAO and there's not, you know, these centralized bottlenecks to its success. And Boris or Stan, if you have anything else to add to that. No, I totally agree. Uh, you know, uh, just the other day, I was talking to other uh, units of grant program uh, committee members, and we came to the conclusion that it's better to have more people trying and failing at things than, you know, to have five people executing flawlessly. Uh, it, Crypto right now, it's all about innovation, different ideas. Uh, and yeah, we, you just need to include as many people as possible because, you know, if they, if many people try uh, enough times, uh, there'll be great ideas uh, coming. Uh, and that's, that's what these uh, projects need, I think. Got yeah, it. I could, I could add that. Pretty much, I agree. I agree what uh, Robert and, and Boris said, and I think the interesting part is is especially the fact that uh, the the founding teams usually uh, try to kind of like kickstart an idea, uh, build a a protocol, and usually protocols aren't uh, actually monoliths. They're just something that inspires others to build new things on top uh, or improve the protocol, uh, create additional features, and and essentially giving a birth to something that that has ongoing uh, uh, development. And this is nothing new in terms of like open source development. This is how Linux has developed mm -hmm. uh, until this date. I think what's interesting is that uh, we're just living in a time where now essentially we can you know, open, uh, open source, open uh, kind of like an you know, open system and in a transparent way, actually contribute into financial protocols that actually uh, bring a lot of uh, efficiency, transparency into the uh, financial system. 
And at the same time, uh, now it's possible to anyone, kind of any part of the world, just to contribute and uh, uh, improve this this financial system. And I think like what's especially important is that uh, what the grand styles and all these programs are trying to achieve is that there's strong enough community to being able to uh, take a uh, community-owned project and being able to do the operations that in, is involved and also continue building. And it's not an easy task because the space is very young, uh, meaning that we don't have enough necessarily professionals and, and people that can help. And it takes a bit of time to get into a level where there's sufficient amount of community developers that are actually uh, uh, taking care of the code base, but it's a process and, and end of the day. And this is what the grant programs is all about. And also tooling, because if you go a couple of years back, building uh, DeFi or any kind of like a Ethereum based application and smart contracts uh, wasn't as simple and easy as it is today. So definitely tooling is something we always can uh, put more effort into and, and have more grants. Boris, you mentioned something which was quite intriguing, which is um, you know, getting as grants as to many people as possible that, are, that have a really good idea. Uh, previously in the Web2 world, um, you know, if people had an idea, they actually had to go out and get venture funding for it. Uh, but now those ideas could come to life um, and bring in products much faster into the ecosystem. So I guess, like, what were some learnings on that regard? Like, um, you mentioned, like, uh, giving grants to a bunch of teams. Like, how has that been? How has been the reaction to that? And uh, has how has it helped Uniswap? Uh, in, in this regard? Yeah, it, it helped immensely. Uh, for mm. example, uh, the tooling was mentioned. So Uniswap grant funded, uh, for example, uh, in first four months, we funded two Python uh, SDKs. Uh, and you can see that uh, some of the developers and builders prefer one, while the others prefer the second, depending on their needs or how they're used, you know, to code the, you know, the first one is much simpler. Uh, it's, it doesn't offer as many possibilities. So people use it uh, for some quick projects or like a bot or something. While the other one it gives you full control. And then uh, if they want to go really serious with their project, they'll use this one. So yeah, it, it, you know, uh, we kind of think that uh, enthusiasm uh, is more important than the actual thing that people are working on. Because if you have enthusiasm, uh, you might you know, spread it around to people that have uh, really good ideas. Uh, and we want to uh, encourage uh, that enthusiasm. Um, and yeah, it, it, in, at the end, it's important what you're working on. But uh, even if it's a small project, we welcome you to the Uniswap grant program family. Uh, you join our Slack, you join the discussions, you can contribute to other projects. Uh, uh, yeah, we had a couple of members like that. Uh, one member was working on a really simple Twitter bot, uh, and then he joined all kinds of different discussions and projects, opening pull requests, documenting stuff. Uh, and yeah, we just want to reward this enthusiasm uh, and you know, the correct ideas will come along eventually uh, if you have enough people really working and thinking about the protocol. Awesome, thank you. Um, so there's another area that, that, that I learned from this conversation, which is accessibility. Um, incredible, like it's incredible that, you know, all over, people all over the world can get access to this grant. Whereas, you know, previously it was very hard to get funding. How has that shaped the ecosystem and developer ecosystem for all the protocols and what have you seen that work really well and maybe standing out i could start with you well i think grants program that they aren't that super new i mean ethereum foundation you had their grants program and i what i see it's interesting is like kind of like it definitely uh sparks some innovation and then give some in incentives to to create and contribute so mm -hmm. Definitely, it's a way to to kind of like kickstart the ecosystem. And before the community grants program, Ava had its own like uh, internal grants program, and I think we funded over fifty different grants. So I think like over a period of time, like these 
decentralized like DAO based grants program will just expand, but also like it might speed up uh, a lot of, of the development and actually maybe projects that normally you wouldn't necessarily want to do uh, from kind of like economical perspective. For example, it might be tooling or something that is very valuable for the ecosystem, but maybe it's it doesn't have some sort of like a uh, you know protocol perspective or a product perspective, but it's just like very valuable. So definitely like in those cases, like it, 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 they are very helpful uh, programs. Uh, Robert or, or Boris, if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I, I think the thing that's magical about it is that you can have people participate that otherwise would not be working in DeFi. Um, you can have people participate with part of their time. You know, you can have people participate in ways that they didn't think were possible before. And I think, you know, an open program has the opportunity to grow the sort of ecosystem of, you know, DeFi contributors in ways that, you know, weren't imaginable even a couple of years ago. And I think that's really cool. Um, one of the things that you see, you know, in um, these grants ecosystems are contributors that are also learning new skills in order to be able to contribute. Um, and I think, you know, in a way, this is kind of like, you know, the new age business school or coding boot camp in that, you know, you're having people, you know, growing their, you know, in some ways, professional careers with protocols. Um, and this is entirely new. What, I, you know, I find really exciting about that is that, you know, you can have people who are anonymous or, you know, known and reputable entities and everything in between contributing. And it just leads to such a different like format of participation than anything we've seen in, you know, traditional software, traditional finance and traditional markets. This is entirely new and the way that you contribute is entirely new. And that's really cool. And I think it's going to evolve. You know, I think there's going to be best practices that emerge um, and things that change. And I think, you know, five years from now, the way, you know, a grants organization works might be a little bit different, but the core of it is just so novel that I think, you know, this is the future. Yeah, go ahead, Boris. Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing. So uh, like grants program are always, uh, doors are always open, but uh, when giving out grants, we, we are really careful, you know, to not do any kind of king making, for example. Uh, so. One good example with Uniswap was when V3 was launched, you know, then you had an opportunity to move your liquidity around to maximize the profits. And we had a lot of, you know, projects uh, sending application for a grant. And uh, we thought that there's already such a big financial incentive that we shouldn't really, uh, you know, do something in this space this early. Uh, maybe later, you know, if there will be some contract audit, something like that, that then that's okay. But uh, you don't want to get involved in things like that, uh, you know, to skew the open sourceness uh, and, you know, uh, promote somebody who maybe is just lucky that you chose him uh, because he was early. Uh, so, yeah, the grants doors are always open for contribution, but when giving out grants, you need to be a bit careful with what you're saying with uh, that grant that you're giving out. Uh, so it, it takes a lot of thinking. Uh, and yeah, I don't know the projects that follow the ethos uh, of your core project is uh, really important. So decentralization and open source, uh, so it's not so simple with giving out grants. Maybe there are some great projects that you think will do great, uh, but uh, they are not good candidates for a grant. Um, so that's, that's just the, a detail that I wanted to point out. I guess on that note, what, what, have been some, what are some of the challenges that, you, that each of the DAOs are going through? And, uh, and how are you thinking about uh, you know, either finding next uh, possible solution or is just just lear learning challenges. We just love to learn a little bit more about that. I'll start just because I have a very visible example. Um, so, you know, yesterday there was a new proposal that was um, launched in the compound community that actually had a bug in it. Um, and it led to a lot of comp being distributed to users that weren't expecting it and didn't you know, deserve it, or, you know, it was basically a bug that, you know, sent lots of this, um, you know, stockpile of comp meant for user distribution to random users. Um, and this actually was a proposal that was created, you know, specifically to um, solve an RFP. 
that was put up by, you know, the compound grants community. And, you know, I, I think this highlights the fact that like, you know, you have a much wider surface area of development and contributors, um, you know, and errors can occur. Um, they can be deliberate. You know, we saw in Sushi Swap a few weeks ago, um, a contributor, you know, was malicious and deliberately tried to undermine, you know, the protocol. And you can have accidents. Um, and the larger the surface area of public contribution, the more risk that you um, add to the process, just from a things that can go wrong perspective. And I don't think this is a bad thing. I think, you know, long term, the more contributors you have, the faster you can move and the larger you can grow. But I do think it highlights the fact that as you start to include, you know, sensitive work into um, a grants process, that, you know, the, you know, seriousness of, you know, additional layers of security also have to increase as well. Um, and so I just think, you know, you know, this highlights the sort of like technical risks of a grants process for changes to a core protocol or a critical system, whether it's a front end or protocol. Systems built entirely on top compartmentalize the risk, you know, much better if you're incentivizing, hey, build this module, you know, this is purely on top of the protocol that can't, you know, add any risk to the underlying system that's different. But when you start to touch the core systems and enable the community to touch the core systems, um, it changes the sort of, you know, um, threshold of risk. I can maybe add that uh, I, I definitely agree. Like that's that's also like something that uh, scares me a lot uh, in the sense like what, like how the the grants that, that are like kind of like core contributions into the core code or anything close or let's say into the user interface that uh, kind of affect affect the whole uh, process and the, the either the application, the smart contract, like how it will be secure. And, and blockchain, blockchain practically kills confidence in the sense that it's just, even if you review things multiple times, uh, there might be something there uh, that the, uh, the, the uh, contributor didn't see or reviewers didn't see. And it happens because it's pretty much humans are coding. And that's, that's one of the things. And what, amazes me still uh and what i think is a big challenge is that there is a lot of funding available uh for pretty much any kind of like a code contribution and improvement but i i think the the market isn't yet there where you know there's enough people coming in uh with expertise enough diligent and you know there's processes in place where there's multiple audits and and this this kind of like procedures to contribute very safely uh, the code and I think like the mismatch is is between like having the the funding is there but then there isn't enough like uh, actual contributors and and processes in place and how to like get these two parts uh, closer together and I think that's a kind of like a challenge that we see a bit everywhere now. Yeah, it's almost like um, you know you have this incredible uh, diverse group of developers that are actively supporting a protocol in so many different aspects, and it's just putting a little bit more process structure, just uh, making a better understanding of how the milestones are hit and supporting the protocols moving forward. And and there's just going to be a lot of learnings behind that as well. So Robert, thank you for sharing that. Um, and so I guess from this perspective, if uh, you know from now till like a year from now to two years from now, let's say. Um, what are some of the areas that you'd like to provide grants for? Obviously, there's people that are building tooling, you know, uh, protocols that can help connect with or hook into, uh, you know, Aave, Compound, or Uniswap. But ultimately, like a year or two years from now, what are some success stories that you'd like to hear based on the grants you give today? Uh, Boris, you can go first. Uh, yeah, well... Uh, for me personally, I do a lot of community and people engagement uh, stuff. Uh, and my goal is to lower the barrier of entry to, you know, participate with some kind of a crypto project as low as possible. So you don't need to have advanced solidity skills to be able to feel like you're contributing to a project and to feel part of the project. So uh, yeah, that's, that's like my main goal that anybody who decides 
two years from now, like this Uniswap thing looks interesting. I have this set of skills. Uh, can I somehow, you know, contribute to it and get rewarded for it? That answer is mostly yes. Uh, and that, that's, that's one of my personal goals, uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, other than that, um, is just, you know, to make the, if there will be a grant program in two years that uh, it, it gets uh, within itself more decentralized because right now you have a committee of maybe five to six people that, yeah, everybody is really careful with reviewing applications, thinking about them, uh, weighing all the options, uh, but, you know, maybe make it more open so people from the outside can also do some kind of reviews uh, and things like that just to, uh, come up with this process of how the, the cryptocurrency grant program should look like, you know, in the open source world. Uh, but it's so early that, that we are still uh, trying to find the, the right approach. Uh, and right now it's not perfect. Uh, it obviously is not. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Stanley, if you want to go next. And, uh, and I'll caveat by saying, like, I, I saw a really cool submission the other day uh, where um, someone wanted to build out a mobile app for Aave, which I thought was quite interesting. So, um, but go ahead. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that was one of the coolest ones. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, it's just like, it showcases uh, what, you know, Robert said that, you know, you don't need necessarily like to be a smart contract developer and yep. contribute, but, you know, you can just start what you actually know and go from there and learn. And, and something like a mobile wallet is a very good example where, uh, you can contribute from kind of like Web2 perspective and just like connect the Web3 components. And that, that is how, why like I, I've seen like in the future, you know, the, the more there is like long hanging fruits, the more we get developers in because it's easier to make uh, contributions into something that is less complex. Uh, also because like many of the newcomers might uh, contribute like on, a, on their spare time and they might be working in a uh, tech company on, 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 as full-time. I, I think uh, in terms of like what, what could be a successful uh, idea is that we have actually people, uh, developers might be community members that are working uh, for DAOs uh, directly, but also working, working in a way, in an inclusive way where they're contributing to different kinds of DAOs. So let's say we have a developer that is making uh, core code contributions into the uh, uh, compound ecosystem makes the same way into the Aave ecosystem, maker ecosystem and Uniswap ecosystem. And we have like this kind of like a inclusive way of, of building these protocols uh, together. Like that will be like very uh, successful uh, part in terms of like how you could participate in the future as a community member. And I think that's the way to learn uh, more. And, and kind of like not just learn more technology and, and but learn also ecosystems and culture. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point um, because we've, I've seen, you know, many applicants that come in that actually, you know, bring in like create like dashboards for Aave, but they also do that for Compound and, and others as well. So there, it could be really cool to see something where, you know, we'll see a contributor that's act actively supporting many protocols and there could be some sort of like shared incentives of like, supporting this from a grants perspective. Uh, but Robert, uh, feel free to add. Yeah, I, I just want to echo what everybody else said. Um, strong points. Um, if, uh, you know, let's, let's talk about today. Um, and we're seeing a lot of excitement around grants and, and a lot of cool tooling and things like that. What would you like to see, like, if, if you had to, you know, divvy up all the kind of sectors that we could support, whether it's tooling, whether it's DeFi pro or just protocols that are hooking into our, uh, into the protocols um, and other miscellaneous services, um, what area is most important for each protocol? Like, if you have to give it your, like, six months. I know I've seen, like, compounds RFPs, and I think that's a really good way to signal to the community of, like, exactly what you want built. Um, but, like, if you had to give your six-month goal of, like, what would you like done that hasn't been done yet? What would that be? Um, ultimately, we're in front of uh, you know hundreds of developers today, and so uh, this could be a good way for them to think about what they should be building next. I'll start just because I think it's relatively different from other protocols, and I think at the end of the day, every protocol has its own 
yep. you know, goals, its own, you know, purposes. Like a great example is Uniswap is really looking for an ecosystem around Uniswap. You know, at Compound, we've really spent a lot of time starting to push the community fo forward and developing the core protocol itself. Um, you know, what I'd like to see in six months is, you know, a whole, you know, um, decentralized team of developers that are able to make improvements to the core compound protocol, you know, add new functionality um, and, you know, really upgrade um, this system that, you know, has been operating for a really long time. And, you know, it's very focused on, you know, the core and not, you know, peripheral systems built on top or alongside of it. Um, we've dabbled, you know, as a community and, you know, other approaches, but I think what, you know, Compound is focused on is really core development and decentralizing that. Yeah, so maybe I can continue. So Robert is right. Uh, Uniswap uh, is not looking for core contribution. It's more looking for everything on the outside. Uh, and, the, you know, the weakest point of the whole Uniswap project, it's the Uniswap app, which is only centralized part of the Uniswap. Uh, and people, uh, you know, th there were some bad experiences where there were scams, you know, uh, scammy deployments of an app. Uh, and I would just like for the, the core uh, Uniswap developed uh, interface for Uniswap to be uh, you know, less dominant and that there are suitable alternatives. So we get uh, decentralized at, at this part as well. Uh, you know, smart contracts, they can't be changed. Anybody can deploy a new pool or make a swap. Uh, but th this one core piece is still somewhat centralized. Uh, and I would like to see that, uh, you know, changed in the future. Yeah, I would say that now in in the Aave ecosystem, I mean it's pretty much up to the like Aave community to to decide what like how you know the whole uh, the uh, community developers will structure themselves and and like there is code contributions all the time, but kind of like what path to take. Uh, I personally like would love to see maybe uh, also more core contributions, but also like uh you know building some of the parts uh uh on top that is part of the the, the core core but expansion but also like you know the ability to improve the whole system in general is something very interesting because essentially uh what's interesting about let's say Aave and compound is that they are uh you know systems that are running completely autonomously and at the same time uh there is so-called like a collateral uh, element there so so these are like very much protocols that require a lot of uh, expertise and and a very very strong community to uh, uphold and I, I think like this is something we're looking uh, as well like how we can make it possible that we get core contributions and and how to establish especially how to establish a, a process where these contributions can be uh, some diligent way uh, reviewed and, and uh, mitigated from risk perspective. So this is something that uh, I'm, I'm personally looking into. And of course, tooling. I think tooling is important, especially if it helps like all of the project across uh, Web3. Now, in the process of giving a grant, um, you know, the, today we're, the way it works usually is that someone applies for a grant, they get interviewed, uh, and then they'll know whether or not they'll get a grant. Some may do, uh, some may get payments up front. Some, they have like a DICO model where they'll get payments based on milestones. Mm -hmm. um, what, what has worked and what hasn't worked? Um, and what would you like to see moving forward from that side? And just to explain, like DICO model is a model that was proposed by Vitalik, uh, which is more or less kind of like milestone based incentives. And so, yeah, it, it, what are some models that you think may work for this? And, and I've seen, you know, pros and cons for both. Well, I can quickly jump in. So there is definitely like DICO model is interesting because, you know, I, I think uh, the issue why DICOs hasn't picked up maybe is because of the name and the association to uh, ICOs a bit. But, you know, I've seen, for example, in the Avagachi 
ecosystem, they have a DAI coin. It's interesting, like how kind of like there's like a tab where, you know, there's monthly payment for the uh, Genesis team there to develop the, the, the metaverse. But at the same time, nothing stop to, stops to create another kind of like a tap to develop some other part of the ecosystem. Uh, so I, I definitely I agree that the milestones are uh, a good way to to, uh, to to compensate. But also, I mean, if there is trust involved and, and you know contributors are committing into the uh, ecosystem, what what can be done is just like a lump sum payments. I also like the ability to stream payments and. I, I think we've been looking into Superfluid and I, I don't know, Robert probably can explain more, but I think Compound has this uh, streaming as well going on. Yeah, we, we have a system internal to the Compound um, protocol, which looks very similar to that, uh, which does streaming, where um, you can have basically a streaming comp grant. And there's obviously external tools, which might be long-term and easier approach, because it doesn't have to become part of the core protocol, but um, Compound's, um, comp governance system can stream comp to contributors. And there's, I believe, two active uh, streaming grants to contributors currently. Yeah, for uh, Uniswap, the different models work differently. Uh, and like, uh, there, there's not the right approach. I think it all depends on the situation and what the project is, but uh, just today, we had like a wave uh, five announced uh, of the uh, Uniswap grants, and you'll see like four or five continuations uh, of a project. So uh, we agreed uh, on the feature set for the initial grant, and then uh, that grant went great uh, and a lot of success around it. So uh, we continued support of it. Uh, so it's somewhat like a DICO model with the milestones, but not exactly. Um, and yeah, to be honest, in the Uniswap uh, grant program, uh, the, the money was never like the, the, the most important part. We have a lot of part-time contributors. I think most of them uh, or, you know, just integrating Uniswap uh, into uh, uh, already existing product. So we support that partly. So uh, not many people's lives, you know, uh, and food on the table depends on the Uniswap grant program. Uh, so uh, like the funding part was, was never really uh, an issue. It was more about choosing the right grants uh, and giving the opportunity to the right people and involving the right people in the Uniswap grants. Great, thank you so much. I'm gonna pass it over to Kartik. Uh, he has uh, maybe one or two questions that he likes to ask the audience. So I'll pass it over to Kartik. Awesome, uh, that was an amazing discussion. I think uh, there's been a handful of questions and some kind of very common themes that have uh, kind of brought up on the chat. So I'll just kind of condense all that into uh, a two-part question. Uh, the first one is just uh, overall, how do people find out about each of your grant programs? and and uh, what can you tell about that? Just as a quick pitch and how people can learn more. Uh, the second part of that question is, um, when people hear about ecosystem grants, they mostly assume that uh, they have to kind of contribute to the technical piece of it. Uh, is that true for each of your grant programs or what are some other ways people can get involved or do they always have to kind of work on something smart contract related? So could you just clarify or, or maybe expand into like how the program is set up? Like, is it based on a list of things that you want people to do or people can pick what they want to do or and all that stuff around it? So just a, a quick, uh, but also slightly detailed pitch on each of your programs. And then maybe we can start off with uh, Stani. Yeah, I think like kind of, I would like uh, start by following, you know, the uh, other grants uh, Twitter handle and just like look into updates and what's going on in the, in, 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 in the space and, and also uh, maybe join the Telegram group where uh, there's other peers looking into uh, building various different kinds of things and, and Discord as well. But um, essentially you don't always need to build it, like uh, specifically anything technical. Uh, grants can be also like educational. Uh, it can be anything else. I personally, I'm not involved in the, uh, the grant style uh, or the grants itself. Uh, but this is how like the process works from from what I have seen, and uh, yeah, I think what's important is that 
uh, not taking any stress of, of these grants. Of course, like if you propose something, like propose in a way that you uh, commit in building it and, and being as kind of like realistic as possible in uh, describing on the time and, and what it takes to build. And also you can post it in a way that, you know, if you need more people, but you're alone, uh, maybe maybe there's a way to find friends to help on build from from uh, uh, the community. So this is actually a very cool way to to make friends as well. So I would suggest that as a road. Awesome. Uh, maybe Boris uh, can uh, come next. Yeah, during this uh, panel, I already mentioned that uh, I personally try to keep the barrier at, at of entrance the lowest possible. Um, so uh, one of the like the lowest barrier of entrance is every two weeks we have a community call and we're always looking for pop-up designs. So yeah, uh, like design a pop-up for us. We're not really strict. We let you do your own thing, your own style, uh, and you get you know to be the part of the Uniswap uh, DAO. Um, of course, there's like a more complex stuff: building smart contracts. Uh, uh, I don't know, the testing infrastructure, all those good things. Uh, but uh, for example, if you see something cool that maybe other DeFi project has uh, and you notice that uh, Uniswap doesn't have it, uh, you can just say, you know, uh, send an application, say uh, this looked really cool for Aave or Compound. Uh, so I can create you this thing for, for Uniswap. So you can steal ideas, for example, a little bit. Um, and yeah, uh, there, there is no rule to it. Uh, if we think that the, the greater, uh, you know, uh, uh, community will benefit from this, uh, we will support it. Uh, you don't need to be uh, only Solidity developer and know the Web3. So that, that, that's my answer to it. Amazing. And I guess we'll close this out with Robert. Yeah, so anyone can get involved in compound grants. A lot of the um, outlined work right now is technical in nature, but there's always a lot of opportunity for those who are not technical to participate, um, whether it's in analyzing uh, markets or interest rate models or, you know, playing on the economic side, you know, creativity is welcomed. Um, you know, you can see a list of RFPs and, you know, um, opportunities that are available on compoundgrants.org. Um, and there's also an active Discord channel devoted specifically to grants in the Compound Discord. And, you know, fundamentally, if you're interested in participating, you know, DeFi is an incredibly welcoming place. There's no right and wrong approach. I think we're all figuring this out as a community and as a society and as a series of DeFi protocols together. So if you're excited, check out Compound, check out Aave, check out Uniswap, check out all of the other programs that are out there. You'll find something exciting and you know hopefully a really good opportunity to participate and contribute and that's an amazing note to end on and uh yeah i think the important thing is that everybody's figuring this out live and uh that just requires a lot of experimentation so um i think just getting involved helps you uh figure out what the right model is so that's kind of where we're at so uh thank you so much for that amazing discussion and uh thank you so much Imran, for facilitating and uh with that we are ready to move on to our next talk and the next talk is going to be about covering the future of other grant style. So uh, we have Shreyas who is going to be talking about all the things that are happening in the Avid grant seeker system and how everything is set up. So without further ado, let's welcome Shreyas. Hey everyone, um, can everyone hear me well? Everything is great. Great. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, let me know if you can see this. We're all set. Awesome. Um, so yeah, really excited to be here. I think um, I I first I started my full time uh, you know crypto journey actually with a an ETH global um, hackathon um, building something on Llama. So it's it, you know it's really cool to to come back and speak here. And um, I think. Uh, you know, we've seen this with Aave Grants too, but there's an amazing influx of, of uh, developers and talent here. And, and it's a really amazing onboarding experience for um, someone into, into Web3. So 
Um, yeah, you know, really stoked to be here. Um, I'm the program lead for Ave Grand Style, and I also uh, am the founder of Llama, which helps uh, DAOs and DeFi, DeFi protocols manage their treasury. So um, uh, one thing I thought would be interesting to start with is something that um, uh, influenced my thinking of uh, crypto protocols and, and ecosystems. Um, and this was a, a post by um, uh, Lakshman Shankar from uh, the Ethereum Foundation, where you know he he compared um, uh, crypto ecosystems to uh, natural ecosystems, and and he was talking about how you know biodiversity is is um, just as important in in crypto ecosystems as it is in in natural ecosystems, and that um, you know the the reason why Ethereum as an ecosystem is kept alive is because of this constant influx of uh, new developers and and builders in this platform and and the you know when that dies and when the the sort of genetic variation of, of the ethereum ecosystem is, is stopped um ethereum will die and i i think um of, of other protocols similarly where ecosystem development is sort of at the heart of um really what makes a a, a protocol in the community thrive and um and ecosystem de development includes uh, sort of this, yeah, this this community that's building the protocol, uh, and and all these other like integrations and 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 support and culture and and a bunch of other things around the protocol. Um, so, you know, that that's influenced, I think, um, how I've thought about the the, the mission at Abi Grants and how we approach it, which is you know building this thriving ecosystem of of contributors building on Abi, and um, we you know are, are a team of um, nine reviewers plus. Uh, you know, two to three other um, uh, folks on staff, and we basically provide projects, uh, grants to, to projects and um, uh, and ideas and community events that benefit the RV ecosystem. And we're quite open minded to what that could be. We have a list of RFPs on on our site, but um, you know, we we're, we're very open to people coming up with with creative ways that they can um, uh, have benefit the RV ecosystem and, and the broader. Uh, sort of crypto ecosystem because um, anything built, you know, built for on, on Aave is is open source and can really like you know push the development of the space um, in general. Um, so summary of the program we launched in um, May 2021 uh, and uh, the it got overwhelming community support. Um, you know, I, I was on the other panel. Like it, it's quite clear that that you know grants programs are. Uh, you know, really a critical piece of what to do with the with the DAO, uh, with, with especially after a certain size, and um, it, it's probably one of the most obvious use cases of what to what to spend um, the treasury um, money on when you have hundreds of millions of dollars in assets. You want to you want to spend on um, you know some way to to grow and and maintain the protocol um, and build this ecosystem of of contributors doing that. Um, so we've the, the plan is to have a pilot program of two quarters that ends in on November tenth, um, twenty twenty one. Uh, the budget that governance has has given us is a million dollars a quarter, and the hope is to expand that budget um, after we you know go back to governance with uh, the work we've done so far. Um, I think uh, you know with 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 the with the projects we're funded, there's definitely a case for. Um, you know, a larger budget, especially if we need to support, I think, um, some of the events and some of the um, sort of sponsorship uh, uh, type work, which right now is, is being done by um, the Ave company. Um, so yeah, this is, so, you know, look forward to, to that over the next few months. Um, our, uh, our group right now is, is um, you know, nine reviewers, uh, two, two staff members, one um, uh, Bill, who's uh, interesting that like he, he actually posted threads uh, when uh, I did the initial community calls, he, he would post threads on um, on these community calls and really useful um, threads on what um, what happened in the community call and a summary of, of uh, key activities in Aave. And, and so I just reached out to him saying, uh, you know, if, if he'd be interested in being a sort of content lead and he's done a terrific job in, in terms of, um, you know, uh, sort of having an Aave Grand Star newsletter and uh, sort of, you know, growing the 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 sort of Twitter community engagement beyond um, beyond just what we had originally to you know to actually hosting community calls and and um, doing Twitter spaces with grantees and things like that. Um, and then we also have uh, Neil Schaff who who works on grant ops and, and ways to actually make the process much more efficient. 
um, in terms of like the, the review speed as well as um, you know the, the support to grantees after. Um, and then uh, we, we have Lara's help with the you know design of the of the pops. Um, we redesigned uh, the the logo because we you know we wanted a different branding from Avi, but something that was related. And so we actually used this team of, of ecosystem development to to come up with that. And then yeah, she's she's done a great job with that stuff. Um, so the progress so far is about thirty seven grants. So this uh, with the it, it's twenty nine until yesterday where we just approved a set of uh, eight more that, that should come out soon. Um, and, um, and you know, a little over $1 million worth of grant awards. All this has not been distributed yet because um, it's, uh, you know, th these grants come in, um, uh, are milestone based. And so it's usually an initial upfront payment and then a payment after a completion of one or two milestones. If it's a really small grant, um, you know, say, uh, you know, below $5,000, in some cases we just make, make the payment upfront. But um, if it's, uh, if it's a grant, uh, you know, uh, say you know anything from uh, twenty to to fifty, sixty k, which is which is common. Um, it's usually multiple milestones, and if it's a larger grant, uh, we we have few over eighty thousand dollars. Then it's um it's it's typically uh, over three payments: so an initial payment, uh, one milestone, and then the the final payment. Um, and and we we've typically awarded grants. Um, Below below hundred k, um, and so anything between hundred and five hundred k, uh, we can technically approve according to our initial sort of governance proposal. But it, it would um, we we'd like to get community sentiment on uh, on whether we should approve it or not. And so we'll we'll yeah, put up a snapshot vote, get get community sentiment. We actually did this for the DeFi uh, app that um, there was this Aave uh, mobile app that was going to be open sourced and built on the Aave repo. Uh, we went to the uh, community and, and asked, uh, you know, uh, basically if it makes sense funding this, I think it was about a $98,000 grant and uh, the community, you know, overwhelmingly supported this. So, so we went ahead with it. Um, but yeah, like, uh, you know, the, the idea is to um, pretty much support like any projects that really benefit the, the RV ecosystem. The, the focus is on, um, yeah, things that are, uh, you know, can, can show some, you know, are realistic or possible to actually do and can show some, um, you know, some, some positive outcome for um, either Aave users or Aave governance or, um, or you know, just like processes for the DAO. Um, so yeah, here, here are just a few examples of, of projects that have like actually shipped and, and launched and done well. Like uh, on the left side, you have Flipside Crypto, which, um, you know, has, has built some cool analytics and, and building, you know, they, they have this community enabled analytics system that um, I think is really, um, uh, you know, uh, help with with improving uh, the sort of data accessibility for things that happen on Aave. Um, uh, we have Symphony Finance that, um, uh, you know, provides like yield on, on limit orders and, and uses Aave to do that. Um, Rabbit Hole had some cool tasks, um, uh, sort of re rewards for completion of tasks actually on Polygon. I think it, it was completed within a few hours or something like that. And so it was cool to see uh, the demand for something like that. Um, and on the right side, we have uh, Gelato Network that basically built a, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a really neat solution for um, to, to prevent um, RV users from getting to these red, really costly liquidations where they would, uh, you know, they, they'd, they'd have something unique on the smart contract side to adjust the positions uh, to prevent those liquidations, which yeah, a huge value add for um, uh, for Aave users. So yeah, the, these are a few examples. Like one of the things um, that we've been doing besides just the grant amount is is actually supporting projects beyond uh, beyond just the dollar amount. So like you know, in, in some cases, if a project needs an auditor, we'll you know we, we'll help and connect them to someone. If um, uh, you know, we, we definitely provide sort of marketing uh, support in terms of featuring them in the. In the newsletter and in and on Twitter um, and you know on the on the governance forums, uh, we you know uh, if if they need an integration with the Avi protocol, we'll make an intro to some from the Genesis team um, as long as they have time and and making sure that that we can prioritize something, uh, you know, a review of something or, or an integration where, wherever possible. Uh, and we're trying to grow that uh, more. I think I think there's much more we we can do, and um, we'd love to build some. Uh, some systems in place to just make that process really uh, efficient and and um, you know just take take these projects to the next level. Um, one other example of that is is actually um, you know we found a DeFi alliance to 
uh, to actually um, you know continue their their accelerator program for two projects from the Avi ecosystems, and it would be really cool to to take some projects that have come out of the, the grants program, especially at a nascent stage, to the next level with um, with you know additional support uh, and and you know funding if needed or or you know specific sort of expertise step support. Um, and you know the, the feedback has been overwhelmingly overwhelmingly positive from the grantees. Like um, you know most of them uh, have been you know, quite happy with um, uh, you know with, with of course the, the the amount, but but also like just the the, the support in terms of um, the the receptiveness of of the of the grants group to um, to the things they need and, and help they need. So it, it, it's um yeah it's great to see that. I, I think there's there's a lot more we can do. Um, and uh, you know a lot more we can we can set up to just make sure that um uh you know the 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 the, the projects that, that we um that we fund uh you know actually like not just execute but also like you know achieve much more than um you know they initially set out even if that doesn't mean something that um you know the initial scope of, of what was laid out with the grant but but just like you know build this this group of people that will continue to, to return to Aave in some way, even if they, you know, temporarily don't. And, and so, um, yeah, the, the idea is as we get into, yeah, I'll go here first. Um, so we get into the future of, of Aave grants, like uh, the way I think about it is, you know, we really want um, the, the current set of grantees to, um, to, to eventually like ha have a say in, in the approval of these future grants. And that's how we, we build this grants DAO, uh, which is uh, through the set of contributors. So if we, um, you know, right now have like nine people reviewing grants like we eventually want to have uh, we're setting up the processes right so that, so that eventually it can actually scale to um you know many more people having you know some sort of say on what grants get approved ideally based on expertise and reputation so for example uh you know if, if there's a group we funded uh for sort of a risk management type thing um and 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 they're you know we, we get a bunch of um uh, grant proposals on uh, risk related um uh, you know, projects, then, you know, it'd be cool for them to approve it. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be cool to have some, some sort of, um, you know, reputation weighted, uh, weighted scoring for something like this and, um, and, and slowly build out like, uh, the, the membership of the grant style and the, uh, almost like, you know, th th I think of it as, um, you know, if, if the, the, the people who have a reputation in, in the Aave ecosystem, which is people who have built for Aave will have some rights over, you know, treasury spending power, which is, which is kind of different from um, maybe the typical token holder vote, uh, which you know will be dominated by uh, you know investors who hold a lot of tokens or, or the core teams. Uh, in this case, it, it, you know you, you could actually move to a, a case where um, you know tre treasury spending power is is allocated more to people who are actually contributing and building and and have a reputation in, in the protocol, which which might be a different set of people, might overlap, um, and so that's how I, I'd think about it. I, I'd say that. Um, you know, we want to build this uh, this this group uh, that will expand. It's right now thirty seven projects, but you know, it, it will expand to uh, to fifty to hundreds of projects, and and um, and have some way that that these these folks can benefit from each other, can um, can you know support and um, and you know vet the the new set of grants, um, and uh, and yeah, build this like cool set of network that um, you know, continues to. Help Aave and and benefits themselves uh, in terms of sort of their uh, career crypto experience. Um, just a little bit on on some of the content work that, that we've done, like um, we've uh, you know we've we've you know published fifteen issues of, of this newsletter, and um, you know it's it's actually a really cool way. I, I would say if if you don't know anything about Aave. Uh, or even if you do, like I still find it useful. Um, that I'm quite involved with Aave, like to, to just get a sense of what's happening in the in, in the community and you know Aave um actually you know does a lot which which is something I love like it has a strong culture of uh, bottom-up ex experimentation um there's of course like you know the core like lending protocol but there's so many other things happening in the in the Aave ecosystem um like uh like Aave Arc or um or the decentralized social network that's that's in the works or um, uh, you know, a sort of Avi deployment on Avalanche or other chains, and and I think it's the Avi News is a cool way to, to track that, and uh, is written you know build rights in, in in quite a uh, easy to to access like fun friendly way, and, and so that, that that's a cool way to I, I think start off just knowing what's happening in the Avi ecosystem, and we also give an overview of 
of what's happening with the grants DAO and um and the grants that we've we, we we've funded so far. Um, the the community calls happen once a month, and um, we do this on Twitter Spaces. Uh, we've found that actually to be quite useful because um, it, it gets a you know higher degree of participation and uh, and it you know it's cool at the end to to answer some questions. Uh, we typically have um, you know an initial intro, um, and then I'll give an overview of, of some things that have happened in, in the grand style. Uh, Sani will will chime in with um, yeah with, with you know Jenny what's happening at the Abbey Protocol. Uh, we'll have like uh, Emilio or someone else from the dev team give, give a dev update. Uh, and then we'll just get into the, the community. And so, um, you know, this could be proposals that have come out uh, from uh, from uh, contributors from the community. So this could be like a liquidity mining proposal or, um, you know, or, or a proposal for Aave to deploy in another chain. Uh, we might include, uh, you know, uh, sort of say like, uh, you know, one of the folks from the Arbitrum team or, or Avalanche to chat about, um, you know, why Aave should deploy there. Um, and, and then, um, yeah, and, and then we feature a bunch of uh, grantees who have gotten funding or, or are still in the, in the, um, in the iteration phase and, and uh, just to uh, learn more about what they're building and, and uh, get questions from the community. And so I think the community calls are usually always quite energizing and um, give a good sense of what's happening with Aave. And we've also started these uh, AMAs with grantees and, and with other community members where um, this is separate from the from the main community call, but it's just a you know getting a deeper dive into you know who who the people are in the RV ecosystem and um, and you know how, how we can actually um, you know get to know them better and, and just um, you know again like form connections between uh, different people in the ecosystem so that they can actually you know uh, help each other and you know um, and take what they're doing to the next level. Um, great, this is uh, kind of all I had. Like this, this is sort of a, a summary of of um, some of the projects we're funded. Um, but I'll I'll stop there, and you know, like happy to to take um, any questions if, if there are any. Um, if not, we can we can sort of move on. Thanks, Reyes. No, this was awesome. Um, there's a couple of uh, questions around just sort of your learnings from the past few months. So I, I think you kind of talked about the new plan, but uh, maybe it'd be good to dig into sort of what you did to come up with this new plan like how, how'd you go about getting feedback from all the other grant programs out there what did you learn in terms of like how things were set up for, for everybody else and some of the lessons learned and uh, could you just walk us through some of that decision making process and, and how you think um the changes you've adopted are uh, are going to help address some of those existing issues yeah yeah sure so um i think uh in terms of like the the next evolution of of grants, it's still definitely like in the works and like where this is like, I would say it's still a work in progress. Um, but uh, like I, I've, um, you know, sp spoken a bunch with uh, with Ken from Uni Grants as well as Larry from from Compound and, and you know, they've, they've been great in terms of, um, you know, sharing their lessons learned. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of similarities between our grants programs and, and some differences, I think, just based on the way that, that Aave operates. Um, and so I think the way we've, I've gone about it is like, you know, thinking through the, um, the, you know, the sort of talking to projects and seeing like what's actually helped them and, and, and what's not and, and things that they, uh, you know, sort of uh, value and appreciate and, and um, ways that you know, that can be improved. And so, um, you know, one of those uh, things is, is definitely like the, the post grant support in terms of like, um, you know, ha having projects with with um you know doing things like sort of get, getting auditors or getting connected with uh with, with the uh, with the Aave Gen genesis team when needed or just just someone like you know so, some of these are really young teams and, and have no um sort of social capital in the ecosystem and, and so just like bridging that gap um where we can uh and right now it's been sort of you know done like really personal and one-on-one -on -one type basis but i think there's definitely scope to um, you know, systematize that and, and make sure that, you know, we actually actively reach out to projects even before they do uh, with, with asking them for the help they need. Um, and then I think the, yeah, the, the next like evolution of, you know, like it's going to be a process and it might take some time, but, but, but slowly, like um, I, I think giving, uh, you know, some of the existing grantees, like um, who, are, who are interested in, in, in doing it, like more of a say in, in what's happening with, with Avi grants. I think that's, 
uh, that's really crucial just to um, you know make sure that that they're still involved. Like these are these are folks who have uh, clearly signaled that um, you know they 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 want to you know do something for the RV ecosystem and and uh, and they you know a bunch of them have and they've successfully completed something. And so we don't want them to um, you know go go away. Like we want them to to continue to do that. And and there's some way we can um, you know incentivize them um, to to stay in the ecosystem and. And continue to support, like I, I think that would be great. Uh, of course, like you know, first with with their with their projects, and um, you know, with, with maintaining what, what they built, uh, or or having a, a you know a, a way that um, uh, you know that they can transition to, to um, other groups who can do the maintenance. Um, uh, it's of course like helpful that all this is is open source, so that makes it a little easier. But but there are cases, of course, where um, you know a projects built, and then you know it. it um, something goes um uh you know stale after after a few months because uh you know because the original team sort of isn't there but yeah the, the goal is to like you know make sure that, that these projects continue to engage with uh with Avi after the initial uh, grant and and i think uh having them have a say in um in the future grantees is like you know one really cool way to do that no it's just really awesome um i think one thing you touched on and this is kind of one of the very kind of common themes is uh post grant support and, and you already kind of brought it up, like what are some of the challenges here and, and sort of uh, obviously as you're giving out grants more actively, it, it can kind of go from 10 teams to 100 very fast. Um, how do you think about structuring uh, the grants program or even the staff to uh, actually position everybody to get the help? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think one of them is is uh, marketing and, and just like uh, ways, like I said, like some of these projects, like they might they might be in an a non project or someone with um with like very very little social capital and um and you know they they uh, might build something really cool but they actually need it need users and, and they need um you know the RV community to be aware that they built this and so uh we really try to uh you know make sure we we push that so so we'll we'll invite them to the community call uh we'll um you know definitely share, share on Twitter, both, both uh, in terms of the grant style kind, as well as like, you know, personally, all of us. Um, and then when they, um, you know, when they launch, we'll try to make a governance forum post. Uh, we, we'll, we'll try to make, you know, intros where possible. It's like, you know, I've introed a bunch of teams to other, other protocols where needed. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's sort of the personal help, but like, I, I would say um, just, you know, helping use, uh, you know, some, some of the, the social capital that, that we have to make sure that, you know, Really interesting projects like get the um, get the attention they deserve. And what's great about the crypto ecosystem is that everyone's really really receptive to this. And it's it's um, yeah, it's, it's definitely like early enough days where where like you know right. everyone's yeah everyone's down to um, to sort of yeah try out the, you know actually take a chance and on someone relatively new. Um, so I'd say marketing is one. Uh, the the other one the other ones I would say are, are more like. Um, uh, you know, what, what, like they they sort of differ by projects. So like few projects have, have asked for for help with getting auditors. Um, uh, I think you know few few projects have uh, have have asked um, just for like sort of technical like sort of smart contract architecture type review. Um, uh, and like you know ha have having someone uh, getting connected to someone who can do that. A lot of times it, it yeah it is I would say like yeah getting connected to like X Y Z person either from uh, the the Ave uh, uh, Genesis team or from like sort of outside and and um, yeah, helping them with that. But yeah, th there's more we can do, and and I think um, uh, you know it, it would be good to to like come up with uh, one like, like sort of survey Ave grant members, um, but but also yeah, just just come up with a you know like hey like th these are actually like three to four things we should like just do as as a default for all projects, and then if there's something additional we can you know we can explore it, uh, case by case. No, that makes a lot of sense. And um, I guess, does that mean this is how the RFPs are set up for AVE grants? Like how, who comes up with what is important or should be funded or we want to work on and what's kind of the process of prioritizing or getting something on that list? Yeah, uh, so we, uh, we've sourced that list from um, one, the, uh, like the sort of AVE community, basically the, the governance forum and, and things that come up in the Telegram group. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we sort of source it from there, we source it from, from the Ave uh, team. There's, there's a bunch of things that, you know, they might want to build that they, they don't have uh, time to build. And, and it's, um, yeah, we, we'd love like the, the community to, to engage with building that. 
uh, and um, you know, as we speak to a bunch of these projects, like there, there are ideas that that come up that we have that might you know like uh, sort of direct like um, you know that that, that might uh, just like have an existing um, sort of integration or something like that, and, and we would we would put that up. Uh, but I'd say that yeah, the top ones um, you know right now listed are um, a governance front end on Aave that's open sourced and built in the Aave repo. Uh, that's something that's you know high priority that um we you know we we're looking for uh you know basically a, a simpler ui for like anyone you know right now if you're technical it's relatively easy if you're not technical it's it's not straightforward to actually make a governance proposal and so make it easier to do that um the second one is like a developer's DAO that um we're you know hoping to wrap up soonish but but actually have a, a team of developers work directly for rv protocol that um, that you know work on some of the um, you know core development, uh, but also like you know some of, like offload some of the um, the work like reviewing governance proposals or things like that. Um, and and yeah, from what the DAO is, so, so, but the developer DAO is super interesting actually. So uh, how do you kind of set something like that up, and and sort of how do you in a way if you were to look at it as like a, a chart like. The whole, yeah, yeah, I hate to say the word org chart, but like <laughs> if you look at it that way, what is sort of like the, the setup here of uh, who is responsible for what and, and which organization manages what? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. I, I don't think we have it figured out, but like um, the the idea is to, um, uh, is like the, there will be a, a team lead and like maybe five to six other people. Um, uh, so the team lead, I think, will work full time, five to six other people will work uh, part time. Uh, I think, uh, you know, they, um, in the beginning, like Avi Grant style, you know, should have like, uh, you know, pr pretty much like what one Carbon from our team has been leading the process, and um, uh, either him or like someone else should should have like, you know, some some type of monitoring of what what's happening with the developers now. Um, and of course, the developers now, sh you know, should be quite transparent with the work they're doing with um with, with the Avi community. So I'd say like some of these structures they start off maybe with especially when they're seeded by the Grant style where they. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm not going to say like sort of hierarchical come, you know, right. the ground staff, but, but more that, that we at least take some ownership over monitoring what's happening and making sure that, you know, if if there's a bunch of funds in the multi-sig, it's, um, you know, besides having something like tally certified, we also have like some human monitoring of, of what's happening and making sure there's reporting to the, go to the governance forum and things like that. Uh, but I think eventually, you know, like the, the pathway is like these, you have these like sub DAOs that, that come out of Aave grants, but then Aave grants stuff, but eventually if they're successful, they just get directly funded from, from the treasury and, and, um, and, and you know, report to, to Aave DAO and, and, um, and you know, there's, there's a mechanism to do that. And maybe, maybe you, you see like these, you know, you, you see dozens of these, uh, th these DAOs that, um, that, that can actually like, you know, they coordinate on, on some level that can function independently to some degree uh, but uh, yeah, like you know, uh, are able to report to to, to governance and and continue that way. Um, but yeah, I, I think the, the the structure of this like is still you know uh, TBD in terms of what what works. I, I think we we need to experiment with it and um, and you know I, I don't especially with the larger projects like the, the, there hasn't been um, you know too much of, of this and so. It's cool for, for us to like pioneer something like this, um, uh, but you know that there'll be some mistakes along the way, and we can we can change the exact structuring of this as we go. Absolutely, and I think um, uh, we kind of just this is going to be a recurring theme in all most of our talks here today, which is it is a pretty massive experiment we're doing at scale, and there's yeah. so much that we're trying to figure out as we kind of go through it too. So uh, we'll take some time, but given that this came out in. Uh, in May of this year, and uh, it feels like forever, and you've already given out uh, close to a million dollars in grants. It's just incredible that we've made so much progress uh, already. Um, I want to also give a special shout out to uh, to Bill on the chat, who's been uh, really uh, been incredible at answering all these questions. And for those of you who are interested in learning more, especially about what's happening in the Ave ecosystem, be sure to subscribe to Ave News. Uh, dot substack dot com because that does cover all the the great things that are happening. And uh, I know we're getting. Uh, uh, I do want to ask a handful of other questions, but I feel like uh, it will probably take away from the, another talk that you have in about an hour, which is on how do you actually successfully receive a grant from the Ave DAO um, committee. So uh, we'll, we'll save some of those questions for that. Uh, in the meantime, I want to thank Shreyas for that amazing overview, and uh, we'll move on to our next uh, talk. So thanks, Shreyas, and we'll see you awesome. soon. Yeah, thanks, Karthik. All right.
All right. So with this, we are ready to move on to our next segment. So we are running five minutes ahead of schedule. Um, but what we have up next is a ecosystem showcase of some amazing projects uh, that have been funded and supported by the Ave grant style. So what we'll do is we'll kind of call up all these six speakers that are going to talk about who they are, what they do, and how you may be able to get involved. So without further ado, let's bring on our very first talk, and that is Hilmar from Gelato, and Hilmar's going to talk about everything that's happening with Gelato. So I'll ask you to turn your camera on, and uh, we can uh, get started. Hey, Kasek, how's it going? Good, welcome. Let's do it. You guys see me all right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, there might be an audio issue if you're not able to hear me, but... Can I can hear you just fine, yeah. So it would be great to learn more about Gelato and uh, you can uh, just take it from here. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I work at a project called Gelato. Um, Gelato is a protocol that automates smart contract executions on Ethereum and on other networks. And uh, yeah, basically, we help developer teams to automate certain aspects of their dApps, um, kind of like taking away the burden of all the DevOps related technicalities that uh, come with running sophisticated financial products um, on public blockchains. And yeah, we, we received an um, Ava Grand style grant um, some time ago to help build out a, a cool product, uh, which is um, uh, available on a website called Kono Finance, and that's basically um, automate like paying back um, uh, debt positions um, and preventing liquidations by kind of like periodically always uh, selling some of your collateral off um, for um, the debt that you borrowed and then paying back your uh, debt periodically to avoid getting liquidated and having to pay liquidation penalties. And yeah, that's basically what we what we built with the other grand store, and I uh, appreciate the support of uh, over there a lot. Amazing. Um, yeah, I'll kind of do some Q&A here as well. So um, let's kind of go deeper into what Gelato is. Uh, you've obviously been part of uh, the ETH Global side for as a hack member has been for the past few years and you've kind of learned so much about what's happening in this ecosystem. And I think I remember just chatting with you a while ago and uh, you kind of also got into the Ave ecosystem a bit early. So just walk us through how Gelato is set up. What was the need for uh, you to build this thing and sort of just everything's happened the past year and a half? Yeah. So yeah, things develop fairly quickly. Um, I think like two to three years ago, I was still going to hackathons um, uh, at ETH Global, hacking on some some funny interest rate swap use cases. We're using ETHLAND uh, back then or, or now Ave. Um, and so, yeah, I was all, always kind of like fascinated and tried to kind of like build more sophisticated financial applications, uh, also like options on, on, on DeFi. Um, and every time you, every time applications require something to happen on a conditional basis, at some point in the future, you kind of require this um, second layer of servers or keepers or bots basically running that actually monitor all the states and then execute certain functions at um, at, at future times, basically. And um, yeah, we, we kind of like stumbled across this issue a lot of times during um, just hacking on stuff. Um, and yeah, at some point um, we were working on a project together with Gnosis and Berlin and, 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 and yeah, we came across this problem again. And then we kind of like decided, okay, that's for us, like for us uh, developers, let's just build like a, a tool that really just like outsources that problem um, and, and try to kind of like fix that for for every for all of our future projects that we want to build and um yeah we kind of got stuck on this on, on solving this issue because it is not that straightforward actually um as it may seem and um and so uh, yeah could you, dig, develop. could you dig a little bit deeper into that like what are some of the complications how do you think about some of these guarantees and also yeah. maybe give us some examples of uh, what you can do or cannot do with gelato right now yeah so um there are like the the very basic problem that you need to solve in such a system is basically um, making sure that transactions get mined in a certain period of time at certain future times, right? It maybe sound quite 
quite easy, but uh, it's actually like, if you think about the blockchain, you only have a certain uh, block limit, right? You have a certain capacity and there are a lot of transactions that want to get in during the same times, maybe if they're like high congestion times and you need to make sure to actually fulfill the duties of your protocol to get your transaction mined in a certain time frame. And um, this is fairly easy if you do like one transaction, but if you do like a thousand transactions in a very short period of time, you need to resubmit transactions, you need to cancel certain transactions, then this becomes very, very complicated. Um, and doing this on one network um, on the Ethereum mainnet might still be okay, but if you then have your application deployed on Phantom, on Polygon, on Arbitrum, on Optimism, you suddenly have to run nodes on all these networks. You have to deal with like RPC issues, um, running full nodes on most of these networks is nearly impossible for like the average development team without like a full-time DevOps team around it. So um, yeah, they are like very infrastructure related problems that you have to solve first of all. Um, and then there's the whole, whole, um, whole issue about, um, okay, then you are kind of like the only one running this bot, right? And if your company kind of like censors or acts maliciously or just kind of like goes down for whatever reason, right? Um, then your whole application, this decentralized application you build is now not uh, functioning as intended, right? So similar to kind of like how the graph um, picked, the, picked the kind of like reading data from the chain problem, uh, we uh, we pick the writing data to the chain on the conditional basis problem, basically. And um, yeah, we want to provide developers with just this infrastructure piece um, that is uh, decentralized, that is censorship resistant, that kind of like runs also when Gelato, our core team at some point in the future is not there anymore, right? That they kind of like can rely on. And, and uh, this is, uh, it takes a bit of time. We are not there yet, uh, but yeah, one, one step at a time. Oh, this is great. And then uh, I was going to say, I think, um... In closing, I guess uh, one obvious thing is that most of the people that are watching this thing and, and participating in ETH Online are developers. So as I think about their hackathon projects, can you give them uh, some sort of uh, uh, thoughts or, or suggestions on how they might be able to use Gelato and, and what are some of the things that they can do? Yeah. Problematic. Yeah, so, so yeah, so um, every time you your application needs to execute certain functions at future times, be it like every... 10 minutes, albeit when Uniswap prices uh, rise above a certain threshold, right? Um, you would otherwise, like, you would normally be required to kind of like spin up your own server and kind of like try to get these transactions mined for PUC that might work, but like in production, that, that rarely, rarely does. So um, um, rather than just do that, I, I would just uh, encourage you to go to app.gelato.network. There you can literally just um, uh, input the contract address uh, of the contract you want to automate then all like the functions appear and then you can just like select the function that you want to automate and you can um, write a resolver contract uh, that defines upon which condition you actually want that contract to be executed you can for example say hey every hour or you can say um, when um, the balance of this user is greater than x right um, and then you you just deposit some ETH to pay for the transactions and then or like some medic on, on polygon for example and then that's it and and you don't need to worry about running any infra. Um, it should work right away. Um, and if it doesn't, uh, let us know. Come to our developer chats on Discord, and we can help you out. Amazing. Well, hopefully everybody uh, got excited about that because uh, there's a lot of automation and scheduling you can do, and there's so many interesting applications with that in DeFi. So yeah. uh, thank you so much, Omar. And uh, for those who are interested, it uh, looks like Bill's already posted uh, a uh, comment on how you can learn more and how you can uh, find out the documentation for Gelato. So thanks again, and we'll move on to our next uh, demo and showcase. And for that, I'd like to welcome Eric, who's going to talk about Omni Analytics. So Eric, whenever you're ready, uh, cool. ready to get started. Awesome. Uh, hi, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me OK. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen as I have a couple slides. And so I'll talk about our project. Uh, so. Basically for the Ave Grants DAO, um, what we did is we were building what we call like an intuitive and extensible analytics framework for the Ave ecosystem. That was part of our, the work we did. And so I just wanted to start by kind of talking more generally about Omni Analytics Group. Uh, I'm the chief data scientist at Omni Analytics Group. Um, and basically we're a boutique data science firm, and we specialize in machine learning, data analysis, AI, and recently cryptocurrency. We've actually been active in the crypto ecosystem uh, now really for a number of years, but especially in this last year, 
Um, we built tools for the Ethereum Foundation, Numeri, Uniswap, Gitcoin, Pool Together, and many more. Um, and we we have a little following on Twitter and, you know, 5,000 plus people. They like to kind of hear about data science, crypto related topics. And, and basically the goal fun underpinning what we do, it's always been about the power of data analytics and data dis decision, data driven decision making. Um, and so that includes things like insights from statistical modeling, EDA, exploratory data analysis, dashboarding, app development, and our whole goal with what we did for the Aave Grants DAO is we wanted to bring some of this to Aave and the broader community. And so this was basically our focus, and it's still ongoing, but we basically broke it down into a three-tiered kind of uh, process. It began with a mainnet Dune dashboard. Uh, we later were sort of contracted into um, doing a Polygon dashboard on Dune, and we followed a really similar structure. I'll show you both of them in just a moment. Um, but then we wanted to take it a step further. So basically, we love Dune. We love the platform. For those of you, you know, who are familiar with it, it's just such a great way to collect data from the blockchain, display it, and, and look at trends and growth trends over time. Um, so we love Dune, but we were thinking, what can we do to take this analysis to the next level? And by our day jobs, what we usually work in is in R. And for those of you who are familiar with the R language, it's effectively a statistical uh, programming language. It has all kinds of toolkits, packages, libraries that can be used to do some pretty cool analyses. And we thought, um, integrating with the Covalent API, where we can pull Aave data, produce a customized dashboard, and really take this to the next level as far as the flexibility would be what we can do to broaden the appeal of the work we've done. So let's take a look. Um, I'm going to first show you the two Dune dashboards, then I'm going to show you the R dashboard and just give you an idea of what we have here. So let me take a look at this. So this actually, let me go first to the mainnet dashboard, then I'll show Polygon. So uh, this is our first Dune dashboard and we structured it in, in such a way that we wanted to present what was the uh, essentially the most important information up front. And really this is like, you know, illustrating the growth of Aave as a platform up front. And we sort of broke it down into these categories. So basically usage metrics where you can see like daily active users, new users of the platform, number of transactions on the platform. And then we basically have a whole section where you can see volume metrics. So this is things like deposit volume, flash loan volume, bar borrow volume, liquidation volume. And we sort of have this consistent structure where you can see there's always a counter and that counter is like one day, seven day, 30 day, and then the total volume. Along with it, we have time series. So basically you get an aggregate metric of each, and then you get a time series metric where uh, effectively that gives you a view of how the growth has has taken place as a function of time. One of the challenges and things that we just had to overcome is Aave, uh, there's basically V1 and V2 uh, versions of the contracts and we aggregated this so you can see it dates back to June for the V1 and then I think since December for the V2. And these queries, unless we're indicated, are all at the aggregate level. You can see this dashboard has quite a lot of statistics, but we tried to keep like keep it consistent, clean, and the relevant stats like really prominent. So that's our main net dashboard. Um, the second one, and I won't take too much time on this because you'll notice it's quite similar, and that was uh, by design. We basically rebuilt the dashboard in for Polygon, and so you'll notice most of the same metrics, some of them are still pending. Uh, some data has recently been added to those tables that have enabled more and we're still working on some more. But a similar structure, basically all the metrics targeting the Polygon um, chain. So same idea there. Okay. And then finally, I want to show you our start on the R dashboard. So basically what this is here is uh, a R Shiny. So those of you who are familiar with it, basically Shiny itself uh, is a way of turning an R analysis into an interactive web application. And we basically built a similar concept to the Dune dashboard. But what we've added so far is basically some interactivity for the user. So instead of just a big tall scrolling list of the volume metrics, so you can select which one you're interested in viewing and then immediately get those results. You can also then filter to a specific
specific date range. So for instance, maybe you're interested in since the beginning of the year to in this case, September 16th to see the aggregate metrics across that time span, then you can get that. And we have plenty more functionality like usage metrics and these all uh, are dynamic plots. We try to include some Aave branding and it's very much a work in progress, but we have a lot of great ideas for what we can do to keep making this uh, more extensible and more sustainable. One other quick comment, just for those of you who are interested, this right here is our GitHub and we're posting the code uh, that basically is used to underpin the dashboard and the Shiny dashboard itself on our GitHub, on the analytics group of a growth dashboard. Anyone's welcome to check it out, follow the instructions to install it and run it locally. And if you have any great ideas for what we could visualize in the dashboard, we're more than happy to hear those ideas. Okay. Let me go back to the slides here and then I'll finish it up. Okay, so in conclusion, really what it comes down to, we're firm believers that when data underpins like the decision-making process, organizations run more efficiently. And so we really wanted to build upon the analytics done in the Dune dashboards, but with the R code, we're exposing the analysis to a wider swath of users. We're interfacing with the Covalent API and exposing that growth data in a way that really the whole community and other developers can access and explore themselves. And since this data is so rich, the potential is so vast, we believe there's a lot more that can be done beyond just what we've done, but we're really, really excited to keep working and about the potential of this. And that's all I had. Thank you so much. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. No, this is amazing, Eric. Thanks for uh, covering this. I think uh, uh, there's a couple of questions. So I think what would be good to know is um, it would be, be great to uh, get your take on sort of the comparison between now focusing on doing this thing for DeFi and crypto and, and sort of what you were doing before. Uh, what yeah. was that? Like, what were some of the learnings or rather insights or the things you were talked about? Uh, I'll start with that and we can dig in a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's a really good question. So effectively, like when we start, when Omni Analytics Group was started, uh, it, we really were focusing on general statistical consulting. And we were looking at like, what are especially like more underserved areas as far as like, you know, industries that don't typically think about statistical, you know, statistical insights as being something that they need to really worry about. And so what ended up happening is as statistics and data science got a little bit more prevalent and, and people started figuring out that this is an industry that needs to be taken seriously, they need to make data-driven decisions. What, what happened is we sort of found the cryptocurrency community and things were starting to take off, but we were seeing some similar patterns, which is that, you know, it, there's a lot of data out there, but sometimes half the battle is just structuring it in a nice way so that you can start to find those insights. And that transition sort of was that, you know, this is another major community cryptocurrency and, you know, blockchain was exploding in 2017 but that does, we didn't have all the analytical tools that we do now. And we wanted to really kind of push in that direction. When you say you didn't have the tools, is that just a comment on not having access to the chain data or do you mean something specific? That, that, that it's, it's a, yeah, m mostly that. I think just at the time, you know, th that data was available, but now we have it basically in a way like Dune lets us just trivially access it. And that just opens up so much potential. But the Covalent API is another good example where effectively we've gone from, yeah, that data is all there, but now we have one unified API that we can just, you know, write some wrapper R code and pull all that and do some pretty cool analysis with it. No, it's amazing. And then um, I know you kind of touched on this thing a little bit, but maybe it'd be awesome if you can dive a little bit more into what are some of these uh, insights that you kind of hope to draw from uh, kind of the Ave reports or the dashboards. Uh, a lot of this is, I guess, uh, the way I understood it, a lot of this was just being able to present the same information uh, slightly differently, but it, how do you think about being actionable from, from that? Yeah, great question. So what, I actually had a discussion about this yesterday with the team because we're what we were thinking, like we spent a lot of time building up the data infrastructure for this effectively to show the growth of, of Aave as a platform. And I think we were really successful in doing that, but to take it to the next step, kind of, you know, what we're thinking here is there's all kinds of metrics that we're basically showing historical data on that we're visualizing the historical data, but what we're not doing at this stage is actually making forecasts, fitting statistical models. So for instance, you know, these, we're seeing a sustained growth in the number of transactions on the platform 
form, but what could those forecasts look like if we were to project them, you know, end months out into the future? And to, you know, there's plenty of machine learning algorithms that we can do to have a pretty accurate time series forecast. And then it would be really interesting to do stuff like having these forecasts produced and then essentially compared against for accuracy as a function of time. So we can continue seeing and refining the estimates over time. I think that would be one direction that would be uh, really worth exploring. No, for sure. That makes a lot of sense. Um, is this something that requires, I guess, more input from uh, kind of the community or the governance sort of calls or, or like, how do you think about prioritizing which ones to focus on? I, I think I think having some more input would be good because, like you said, it's a question of prioritization. We, we the the sky is sort of the limit for what we can do, but maybe there's an immediate need we want to say, like if, if if you know this these projections are just one example. But if someone was say you know interested to say, what is the you know the projected borrow volume over the next n months, and we started with something like that, we kind of could prototype it out, assess how the model is doing, and then expand it as you know the community sees fit. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. It'll be uh, case by case, I guess, or need base. Um, and lastly, before we move on to our next stop, um, how can people get involved in what you're doing and where can they find out more? Sure. So uh, lots of ways to do that. But um, if you want to get in contact with us directly, uh, our Twitter profile is probably the best way to do do it twitter.com slash omni analytics and if you dm us uh and and just you know say you want to get involved with working on this whatever aspect it is we would love to collaborate um we, we like i said everything that we've done for the r dashboard is on github and then everything for the dune dashboards is obviously on dune public facing and we'd love anyone if, if they'd like to collaborate with us just contact us on twitter uh my email also eric at omni if anyone wants to contact me directly that works just fine as well amazing well thank you so much eric and uh hopefully more data scientists and eager engineers uh, come in and help out with those models thank you very much and with that we are ready to move on to our next demo and I want to welcome dennison who's going to talk about tally great to see you again dennison hello hello howdy howdy uh, good to see you too. Good to see everyone here. Um, that was a really great presentation. I was just writing out Eric's email address because I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so what I wanted to talk about today was the project that we worked on for Ave Grants. Um, ours was a pretty interesting project. It's called Tally Safeguard, and it was originally built uh, from a Uniswap grant. So the, the idea of Tally Safeguard was to address some concerns around the flexibility and permissions layer of DAOs. And our grant with Aave was specifically around funding the uh, audit with Open Zeppelin uh, of these contracts. So I think the best way to sort of describe um, the, the tally safeguard, what the problem is, is that uh, you have a couple different camps when it comes to like governance and the ability of like governance to act quickly in the event of an emergency. Uh, it's a little bit timely you know, if some people are following the, the bug in um, uh, Compound uh, introduced by a, a community proposal or introduced by a proposal. There's this need to have a permissions layer around acting quickly. So uh, what Tally Safeguard does is actually wraps the time lock, which is the sort of authority in your governance with a permission system where you can give different addresses permissions around creating uh, proposals, uh, executing proposals and canceling proposals. The idea here is, is that you can go from a governance structure where you have the token holders who directly control uh, a time lock to uh, a situation where the token holders directly control the time lock, but they can add other folks as controllers on the time lock with different permissions. So for example, they could say, hey, um, we wanna add this multi-sig to have the authority to create proposals on this time lock that then sit in the time lock for some duration of time during which governance could come in and cancel them, right? So the idea here is if you have a trusted group of individuals that, um, have the ability to like create proposals at, at will, uh, there should be some sort of administrative function where governance can come in and say, no, this proposal should not go through. Uh, similarly, governance can give someone else the ability to cancel proposal. 
Um, so what you end up having is this, this ability to like compose authority in your governance. And the way that would look is a little bit how I just described it. You may have one multi-sig that has the ability to create proposals, uh, another multi-sig or an individual that has the ability to cancel proposals. So you could use that, for example, in a setup where um, you know, governance is, is open and it can create a proposal, but you could have a sort of a overseeing group of security esper experts who have the ability to cancel a proposal, uh, or you could do it the other way around, right? The security experts can propose a proposal, governance can cancel it. Uh, you can also use it without uh, a governance itself, where you could just simply have different combinations of multi-sigs or different combinations of individual ad addresses that have different permissions to, to create, uh, execute, or cancel. So you can kind of imagine how you could build any sort of permission structure based around that so that you can have um, a DAO that both has true token holder governance, but also has the ability to execute things in a quick manner uh, or can be used as sort of like a subgroup for, for um, treasuries. A great example that, that we first uh, had thought about when we were building Safeguard was grants committees, where grants committees themselves have this interesting situation where uh, you know, a proposal is created on governance that says, okay, let's give a million dollars to this grants committee. And now this grants committee is a, a group of multi-sig holders, but now they receive the money and they have ultimate authority over this money, right? It's not possible for the, the governance to claim this money back from the multi-sig unless you ask the multi-sig nicely. And this can sometimes be an issue, right? Like you can, you can uh, distribute funds to a multi-sig that are worth, you know, a million dollars on day one, uh, you know, DeFi can go to the moon and they can end up having a hundred million dollars in that multi-sig. So the sort of trust assumptions that the community may make around members or signers of this multi-sig may be different depending on the, the levels of, uh, maybe different like based on like how much value is being held there. But this sort of like delegation of authority in, in terms of delegating uh, money is really one way. So the idea here around safeguard was is that you could use it, for example, in grants committees where you can delegate spending authority to a group, but the governance can still take it away without actually having to ask permission from the multi-sig holders to do that. So what I, I'll share here really briefly is just our repo so folks can see it and uh, go check it out. This is what's being audited uh, currently at Open Zeppelin. We have, uh, you can find it here at uh, github.com backslash with tally backslash safeguard. Uh, if you go through the readme, I'm not gonna go through the readme fully, but if you go through the readme, you can talk, it talks about the sort of problems that I just laid out and uh, the solution and vision that we have thought of, including sort of a, a preliminary specification on how it works. So this grant was uh, for auditing it. Um, the audit is almost complete. We've just gone through the process of uh, addressing some um, just minor minor things that came up in the audit, um, nothing, nothing major, but that audit should be completed in the next couple weeks. Um, you know, optimistically next week, um, uh, probably safer to say in the next two or three weeks. And that will be available here. Obviously it's open source, anyone can use it. Uh, and happy to really talk to folks who are interested in finding ways to incorporate this with their multi-sig, with their governance of multi-sig, with their you know governance multi-sig end user uh, externally owned account. Um, I always call it like end because it's e uh, externally owned account. So we're happy to speak with anyone about that. Happy to talk more about that. Um, you can uh, you know uh, uh, go to the the repo here, and you can also always find us at uh, withtally.com, which is here. So. Uh, happy to take any questions and yeah. That was awesome. Um, thanks for that. Uh, I, I think uh, it, it's less of a question, more of like, I want to give you more of a spotlight after the audit is done specifically, what can people do and what would you like them to do? So after the audit is done, what I would like to see people do is two things. One is I would like to see grants committees set up where the governance has true authority over the grant money, right? Uh, it, it doesn't feel long-term, right? When we talk about Ave Grants Committee, Uniswap Grants Committee, Compound Grants Committee, these are very large DAOs with a lot of money, with a lot of prestige, and it's not so hard for them to find pretty high-profile individuals who can be trusted 
uh, folks to, to manage these, these pools of money. However, you know, when we talk about the future and DAOs really spreading, not all DAOs are going to always have access to these, these sort of like, quote unquote, famous individuals with a lot to lose and reputation in the space to manage their pools of money. And they can certainly run into a situation where maybe today, you know, XYZ dog token, you know, maybe it's worth $1,000, but, you know, something happens and boom, now it's worth $10 million. And oh, by the way, it's managed by five anonymous uh, users on a multisig that you've actually never met, right? O of which you're not even sure they're all different people, right? It could all, all be one person. So, so for these smaller communities, the risk becomes quite high and that becomes a kind of existential risk to the trust in the community. So if you use something like Tally Safeguard, um, these grant committees can sort of insulate themselves from that danger. On the flip side, it also potentially, and I'm not a lawyer, I cannot give legal advice, um, but it can potentially help with the claim around decentralization, right? So you um, currently, so a lot of uh, governances use multi-sigs as their governance, um, but in the eyes of, of uh, some, you know, legal uh, things, again, I'm not a lawyer, um, that might not actually fly, right? Like you, you have the concept of like an unincorporated general partnership, which is what most multi-sigs are. Um, these multi-sigs are, you know, if you create a grants committee with a bunch of friends, um, actually each of you is responsible for paying tax on the entire sum of money that is uh, uh, received in that multi-sig because it's an unincorporated general partnership. Again, this is not legal advice. Um, so, you know, using something like Tally Safeguard where actually the governance has the uh, ultimate authority. And for example, you know, maybe the multi-sig holders can propose ideas that still go past governance. And if governance does not take action, can be automatically uh, you know, effectuated. Um, maybe in some cases uh, supports the argument that you're truly decentralized, right? Because today, um, you know, using just a multi-sig straight really puts a lot of onus on the multi-sig holders and a lot of liability potentially on the multi-sig holders. Again, not a lawyer, not legal advice, uh, but you know, the, the thoughts are like, how do you build a safe protocol um, that's both safe for the members and safe for um, the, the, the uh, participants who are maybe signers? So that's where, you know, I think that's a really great example for your, for your governance, for your, um, you know, uh, grants committee. No, it's awesome. And I think I want to also say that as a side effect of this setup, you also uh, get to design a system that scales with the user base. Like now you can have a lot of people come in instead of having two to three or whatever, five people, which is kind of making a hierarchy around a like 2000 person DAO. So uh, you also want to think about those because that exactly. prevents you from growing even more. Exactly. Uh, amazing. So thank you so much, Denison. And thank for you. Check out Safeguard on the Tally GitHub repo. Excellent. Thank you, folks. All right, with that, we are ready to move on to our next talk and introducing next is Will Robinson from DeFi Lines and Will's gonna talk about what DeFi Lines is and how they work with uh, Aave and everything that you can do to get involved with DeFi Lines. So without further ado, let's welcome Will. Hi everybody, uh, excuse the background, I'm reporting from stairs as my house is under duress. Um, uh, my name is Will. I've been at DeFi Lines for six months, a uh, proud recipient of an Ave grant. Uh, DeFi Alliance has been around for over a year and a half, building out uh, an accelerator that helps grow DeFi users to uh, 1 billion by 2025. It's an ambitious mission. Uh, it basically means that we're uh, looking to uh, find new projects, grow them, invest in them, connect them, teach them through a curriculum that runs uh, basically four times a year at this point. Uh, we're finishing up with cohort five. We'll be doing a keynote next week hosted by um, Joey Krug, uh, who is from Pantera and Augur. Um, and there we will showcase uh, 25 teams, uh, two of which were sponsored by Ave Grants uh, to uh, build out protocols um, and grow on top of Aave. So interestingly, uh, early on, we had partners from layer ones like Celo and Terra and Algorand now, um, and Solana, 
Uh, and these ecosystems, right, they wanted us to bring DeFi to them and accelerate on top of them. But at a certain point, we realized that like Aave is its own ecosystem. Um, it's its own platform to grow and build on top of. And this is the promise of DeFi, right? Lego blocks. Uh, and so Aave wanting to um, support projects building on top of its foundational Lego block, like thus increasing its moat uh, and importance in DeFi, uh, you know, tapped us to, to, and we tapped them, I guess, to, to try and do that. Uh, and so only they and uh, Uniswap have been like uh, layer 1.5 uh, for us as partners. Uh, and I'll show you my our website so you can get a sense of what we're all about. Uh, you should be able to see it here. So uh, defialliance.co, uh, helping Web3 startups succeed. Uh, we have uh, basically this theme around terraforming new lands um, and uh, Ave's logo will be scrolling by in a moment there. <laughs> um, so we have uh, two facets. We have the accelerators, uh, which are DeFi and gaming now. Uh, my own background is across both. I used to be a financial auditor uh, looking at crypto wallets and multi-sigs and making sure that the assets were there and that I could sign off on the books. But before that, I did a PhD in video game design. Uh, and so I'm excited to do both. And think very closely about the intersection between DeFi and gaming as well, because we see gaming as like the road to future uh, DeFi users. Uh, and I, I suspect we will be letting in Avagachi, if not in this accelerator, in the next one, as like a very cool example of a game built on Aave. Um, and then we have this industry network. Uh, these are you know companies, uh, that are made up of market makers and liquidity providers to help bootstrap our DeFi protocols, uh, but also like lawyers who are really important and code auditors uh, and community managers, you know, the sort of penalty of all things you would want to have to ensure success for your teams. Um, and we've accelerated some pretty cool alumni. Um, and yeah, what makes us unique is our access to liquidity and community and investment. Um, and uh, we have these like amazing mentors, uh, like the list goes on forever. Uh, you could come see at some point who, who you'd like to, to meet maybe one day. Um, and the uh, grant has allowed us to um, essentially bring these teams on without taking equity uh, in, their, in their product. This is allows, allowing us to source better teams um, that just want to grow and don't need to worry about like the financials or anything. And so we give them this sort of like VC privileged accelerator process. Um, and that's like covered by Ave. So in some ways we're like a, a grant regifter in, in that sense. Um, and we have a, a variety of resources. We also manage something called DeFi grants where you can see um, not just Ave's grants, but um, everybody's grants in the ecosystem. And we're trying to make this the go-to place to, to find capital. So if you're interested in that, definitely take a look here. Um, we also, in addition to DeFi grants, uh, maintain something called DeFi jobs, which is over here. Um, and we have like 206 jobs in DeFi. This is all a work in progress. This is our old logo. Um, but you can find like, for instance, the nine jobs at Aave or you know, jobs at some of our cohort companies and other companies we've accelerated. Uh, the uh, overall like goal, right, is to foster a really rich community full of like signal, uh, filter a lot of the noise that you find in crypto and make sure that we find strong builders who want to come work together from a diverse set of backgrounds and skills. Uh, and if you're interested in doing that, we'd really love to get your application in. You can apply to DeFi or gaming. Um, if you're building on top of Aave, we'd love to, to hear about you. You can get your questions answered here. Um, you can apply through our form right here. Uh, so, you know, here's the, here's the cohort six application form, which will be starting sometime. We said November 23rd, we'll actually be pushing it um, because uh, we're also at the DeFi Alliance about to go DAO. Um, We've been like a centralized organization trying to get this thing off the ground, but we really want to um, sort of dog food the Web3 that we're building um, and think that it's 
totally worthwhile to experience being a Web3 company, accelerating Web3 companies uh, in, in this way. Uh, so deciding to do that has meant this is a 40 day delay on this cohort. Um, I also can like show you our industry network. So because we've succeeded at attracting, um, you know, such great companies because they don't have to give up equity, we have great sort of service opportunities. So like, if you want uh, and join DeFi Alliance, I like you'll jump the line at Quant Stamps, Quant Stamps public queue for audits, for instance. Um, or you'll get to like talk to our hype marketing team or directly to Jump Capital or Wintermute to get your liquidity. Um, and so all of this is possible because of our sponsors like Ave Grants. Um, and the hope is just to uh, grow DeFi as fast as possible and be along for the ride. My, uh, my sense of this is that uh, we're, we're kind of summoning like primordial forces when playing with crypto, these sort of like self-perpetuating protocols that through value capture and then ability to redirect incentives, grow a whole new um, way of being and interacting. And I think it's terrifying and also amazing. And that's, that's why I'm really keen to, to join this like ride and to see where this goes. And so I think that's the passion that fuels DeFi Alliance is just let's make DeFi happen faster and, uh, and and think about it critically while we do it. I uh, am totally happy to um, take questions if those do uh, happen, but otherwise uh, I can also keep going. Uh, Kartik, do you want to give me some guidance here? Yeah, uh, so we got a couple minutes. I, I think uh, if you have anything else you want to uh, talk about, please free, uh, feel free to. Uh, I think the one question um, we would have is, uh, you sort of talked about the experience of the accelerator without the dilution, which is a pretty good incentive and, uh, and a pretty good pitch. But uh, could you go a little bit more into detail of, of like how the accelerator works? Uh, what does it mean to be in a batch? Um, what are the things that you do for each of those companies? And just a little bit more about that experience. Yeah, definitely. So uh, it's something of a moving target as we're always refining and, uh, you know, we're evolving with the times. Um, currently, the Accelerator lasts six weeks where we do about mm, six hours of content per week. And that's like listening to Kane Warwick speak about how he built synthetics or listening to Genny Wintermute about how to negotiate your liquidity deal or listening to Larry Sukernick on how to structure your DAO or Spencer Applebaum about how to uh, give away governance tokens in order to bootstrap your liquidity that way. Um, so these are really detailed um, lectures that aren't just like feel good motivational speeches, but like technically like difficult problems that you don't even know you have to solve um, from the industry experts, which is not like the, you know, Y Combinator who people compare us to, um, right? Where it's just like, here's how you like, you know, beat those guys and raise your spirits. It's more like, this is a complicated space. Here's some subject matter experts. Um, and then we have uh, like our ecosystem partners, such as uh, Ave and Uniswap and Solana and Celo and everybody sort of helping out in Polygon and uh, teaching our teams how to build on their systems. We think the future is multi-chain, like, although we love Ethereum, like super deeply, uh, we do want to see all these other platforms, give it a shot and grow. Um, maybe, you know, teach Ethereum a thing or two and vice versa. Uh, and so uh, they're helping our teams navigate their own grants and their own code reviews. And they're also giving their state of the union and their vision of how they're different. So that's a pretty cool kind of value add. And then we have our regional chapters. Uh, so there's a European DeFi Alliance chapter where we get like a chat from Ajit Tripathi from Ave and Melton Demirers from CoinShares. And that's always a hoot. Uh, and then we give uh, a talk from uh, China with uh, our, our chapter there. Um, that's usually headed up by Mabel Jang, who's from Multicoin. And we have our Indian chapter. Uh, where we'll have like, you know, the Polygon people and other like Quantstamp people uh, and the other amazing companies coming out of India. Uh, give the lay of the land, how to hire there, how to market there, how to like um, think about your community um, globally through the lens of these regional chapters. Uh, so that's like a big part of it, but it all sort of like culminates with Demo Day. And a big part of our program is making sure you can like pitch your company to a large audience of DeFi stakeholders uh, who are going to know what you're talking about and need you to succinctly 
clarify what you're doing and who you are and why they should trust you. Uh, something that people like often forget is that like DeFi protocols, so until they're like living on their own, uh, are people, right? And like they're going to pivot and they're going to change and they're going to make code mistakes. And you got to really know who the people are behind that protocol until it's like, you know, past its like Lindy effect stage. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our program. Um, you get to chat with me and I get to help you out whenever you need it. Uh, that's another part of it. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the game track, well, we're trying to get like the best game tokenomics people and the Twitch people and the Discord people to sort of structure your community. So if DeFi Alliance, DeFi program is about liquidity, um, the uh, game program that we're launching is about community. Those are the sort of bloods that run through the veins of these different kinds of Web3 projects. And that's a excellent pitch that uh, if I ask anything more, I'll probably ruin the, the good note that it's ended on. So this is great. Everybody who wants to learn uh, more about DeFi Lines, head over to DeFiLines.co and I'm sure you can contact Will on Twitter as well as uh, through the website. So I guess I encourage everybody to apply. And uh, with that, we are ready to move on to our next talk. Thanks so much, Will. Bye-bye, everybody. So next up, I want to introduce Matthew, who's going to talk about Rama. So uh, Matthew is here. Uh, whenever you're ready, feel free to uh, get started. I think you are still uh, muted, so we'll just give you a quick second on uh, being ready on the audio side. All right, can you guys hear me now? Here we go. Yep. Cool. Let's see, and can you see the screen okay? Everything is good. I'll just my full screen here. I don't know. Awesome. All right, so. Hello everyone, my name's Matthew, I'm uh, from, from the Llama community. The Llama community received a grant some time ago from, from Aave and it's focusing around uh, Aave's treasury management. So, oh, I had some difficulties. All right. So within this grant we have uh, a few main deliverables. The main ones are focusing around the vision for Aave, what we would like to try and achieve with their treasury, how we want to put it to use and the direction we think we can we can take it in as a community. Uh, we're also putting together um, an asset management framework, which kind of really structures a lot of the decisions, allocations, how we're going to implement it, how we kind of approach risk. Uh, we're also going to put in some initial initial strategies. So I put forward some ideas or presented on the governance forum and then they'll progress to an arc over time. And then hopefully we'll get uh, one of those through within this grant or maybe potentially the next grant. So, and then touching on some of the areas around like financial reporting, uh, what we're looking to create is income statements, uh, cash flow statements and balance sheets. And we want to start producing those periodically on a monthly basis. And with that, what we're going to try and try and do is different from more traditional companies. We want to try and make this kind of live data and we're trying to use data analytics and, and June to help us do that as a tool. So summarizing the, the first main deliverable, which is the, the vision document. Uh, this is available on the RBA Treasury, um, RBA Governance Forum, if anyone wants to go have a read. So this document is, this outlines the vision, the vision with, we're presenting to the community is to encourage innovation, accelerate growth, uh, prudent financial management of assets while providing relevant and transparent financial reporting content. Uh, we suggest that the community should remain overweight Aave to capture the future growth upside, whilst also hedging the, the risk against adverse market conditions. Uh, assets are to be, to, to be deployed productively within the guidance of best asset management practices. Uh, Real-time financial metrics performance tracking will be providing transparency to the community and support decisions around how best to deploy the community's capital. And we're also, the treasury management and financial reporting is in its early days and requires nuanced thinking within crypto. And this creates an opportunity for our way to continue being a leader within the space. So within, within the vision, we're also looking at uh, 
what, how would you construct like a portfolio of assets that Aave would hold within its treasury? So within that, we're also looking at um, a lot of risks, which are going to be heavily detailed in kind of like the asset management guidelines. We'll go into a little bit later. Uh, we're looking to some of the unique features around like liquidity considerations at a asset portfolio level, but then also in DeFi specific like on-chain liquidity. So getting in and out of positions. Uh, we're also looking at um, how do you remain long Aave in your treasury? And then also deploy it productively. And some of the ways of doing that is, is through debt. Uh, and whilst maintaining that really large long Aave positioning, we try to want to hedge away some of the market volatility. So if we go into say like a crypto winter, the, the treasury doesn't you know substantially fall with the market. So we're looking to try and offset some of that whilst also capturing that upside. So that's really about like maximizing the upside and then minimizing the downside and really just trying to um, deploy assets from the treasury productively so we can make the most out of DeFi really. Um, so when we talk into asset management, uh, we're kind of really here, we're trying to really create a framework that the community can kind of understand uh, and refer back to in times of like turbulence, like we're really trying to drive this preserved capital whilst growing the protocol, whilst also trying to like reduce risk. Uh, so that's just touching on that, that hedging angle from a price, but then idiosyncratic risk is also where are you deploying your assets? If you deploy all your assets in a single area and something happens to it, then you've got a lot of exposure, but if you spread it out across the space, then you've got less specific risk on each investment. So with this, like the, the risk angle is very important. Um, there is, there's the credit risk, the market risk, there's liquidity, there's infrastructure. So I kind of touched on those few, few times now. And then the nuance of DeFi is the DeFi specific risks. And that's where you really start to think about like smart contract risk, admin keys, oracles, um, open source code, uh, so basically making sure where you're recommending to suggest to the community that you've done the due diligence and this is a safe rec safe suggestion. So the way in which we tend to implement uh, treasury management is through the AIP process. That means everything's going to go through the governance forum. It's going to be open to community feedback and engagement. We really, really encourage people to to review our posts and like give constructive feedback. Um, we're all just trying to do the best best we can. So anyone who comes up with a, like an amazing idea, we really want to hear about it. Um, within the asset management guidelines, we're also trying to think about long-term for Aave, if there's any strategic assets that have a place in there. So uh, that could be just equity through alignment of two communities kind of objectives. Um, and that could be like just through partnerships as well. If we introduce leverage into the treasury, we really need to have a strong understanding around that, like really know where our health factor is, like our interest cover ratios, what are we gonna do in certain conditions, like a lot of forward planning there. Um, if you think of the, the treasury as like this asset allocation, or asset portfolio, periodically, you're probably looking to like rebalance that. And within each allocation in that portfolio, you've probably got bands of like mins and maxes where you want to keep a certain allocation. So that's something that we expect to be um, ongoing over time. There's the potential there to do a, a treasury committee. And the, the suggestion we presented is that that would be something that would meet quarterly to review the, the asset management guidelines, um, the existing composition and, you know, how it all kind of fits together with the overall objectives we're trying to achieve. So, and we look to manage the treasury in, uh, in perpetuity. So we're recognizing that like the community has been around a fair while now, and it's gonna be around for many, many years to come. And we wanna make sure that we're planning for that extended time horizon. So the best way for us to frame that is to consider this in, in perpetuity. So now th this slide trying to show some of the some of the work we've already done. There's a, um, a June analytics page that's out. It was done by one of the Lama community members. 
So what this is showing right now is at the top left, you've got like the Ethereum reserve factor, which is essentially your are they V2, V1, how much revenue has been generated from it. So as you can see here, we're looking at like 15.5 million, which is really good. Uh, we've got like the reserve factor, sorry, the ecosystem reserve, which is basically the core ALA holding. So, and on the right, we've got like the, the Polygon reserve factor, which is how much revenue has been generated on the Polygon network. And you can see um, from, the, from the charts, like particularly the one on the left, it looks a little bit exponential, like it's a really great chart. Uh, and, you know, Polygon's done really well. It's like coming out of the blocks and it's been super strong performer for the Aave community. So there's a lot more charts on this Aave. Um, and Llama dashboard. So if everyone is keen to have a look at some of those financial metrics, we encourage you to go, go have a look. So coming into some of the more um, financial kind of reporting side of the, the grant, what we've got here is, uh, this is one of the first statements we've produced, which is basically a USD nominated um, Aave V12 like p &L statement. So what it's doing is it's showing monthly, the USD value that Aave is kind of, um, is, is revenue it's generating USD value. Now, you know from the previous chart that when you accumulate it, it looks pretty exponential. What you, what you can see here is, if you look across the bottom line, as you can see Aave is actually quite, performing quite strongly month on month. It's getting a, it's good growth. You can think back and uh, there's been a fair bit of volatility in the, in the price of assets. What you can see in here is, the bottom line in Aave is somewhat influenced, but potentially not as much as what you'd see at some other protocols. So what you're seeing is a really strong upwards trend in this, and it's uh, it's it's quite a good balance sheet. So this is one of the three main uh, financial deliverables that we've got, and these these are all available through the Aave governance forum as well. And if we were to look at the the breakdown of some of this, what we're seeing is the reserve factor is it's very heavily concentrated in um, USDC um, and DAI and USDT, which makes a lot of sense because those are the, the biggest pools on, on Aave for lending and borrowing. And the, the Polygon network is generating very similar, but just in a smaller magnitude, but the distribution is a lot more balanced than say, say V1, V2 combined. So that's really how what all the numbers are kind of presenting. And if we were to, to look forward to kind of what comes next, uh, we're looking to build out the balance sheet. That's the one piece that we haven't really yet developed. We've got the income statement, we've got the cash flow statement. We really want the balance sheet. And then we're really going to start going into uh, a lot more data on June. We're going to start looking at a lot more financial metrics, like how's Aave performing, peer-to-peer um, -peer ratio or peer-to-peer -peer comparisons. So return on investment, all those kinds of statistics is where we're looking to kind of develop out. And we're looking to provide all this in a, a really easy uh, format that the community can kind of take a glance at and really just kind of understand. So, and that's, that's how our, uh, Llamas today, what we've done with our uh, Aave and a little bit about where we're planning on taking it into the future. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matthew. And uh, this is great. Um, maybe just one question would be, how can people get involved if they want to and uh, sort of uh, what are some ways to keep up with everything that's happening with Llama? Sure. So the best way to keep up with what Llama's doing with Aave is is via the, the governance forum. Like everything we do there is published. Uh, if someone wanted to get a little bit more actively in, involved in the treasury management side for Aave in particular, uh, I'd definitely be on there on the governance forum trying to contribute and throw ideas around. That's really a good place to, to showcase what you've got to offer. Uh, in terms of contributing to, to Llama itself, like I think probably just reach out to us via Twitter. So we're not really, I don't really have a website with uh, a Discord where you can come join yet. That's something that'll come in time. But yeah, just reach out to us over Twitter and we'd, uh, we'd love to have a chat. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, Matthew. And uh, we are, with that, ready to move on to our next uh, talk and demo. So um, I'd like to welcome Ben uh, from Rabbit Hole.
and uh, we'll just give Ben a quick second to uh, get set up. And uh, Ben, whenever you're ready, feel free to get started. Hey everyone, thanks for thanks for having me today. Um, my name is Ben, and I am the operations lead at Rabbit Hole. For those that don't know, Rabbit Hole is a, a platform that simultaneously does two things. One for communities and protocols like Aave, we help protocols find the best users and participants um, for their network. And then on the other side for, for users, we, we help them learn about onboard into different projects um, and, and use different crypto applications um, and help them earn crypto for doing so. So we recently did a a quest, the, the core function of rabbit hole is, is a quest where um, a protocol uh, provides some amount of rewards that incentivizes a specific action for users to complete. If rabbit hole, we, we verify using um, the graph uh, that a user has completed a specific action um, that applies to the quest, we reward them with the tokens that are provided. So we recently did a quest through the Ave Grants program where we incentivized users to both uh, lend and borrow funds on Ave Polygon. Um, we targeted 2000 users and actually had 2000 users complete this quest and redeem the rewards within 12 hours, um, I believe were the numbers, which was incredible. It really showed um, the excitement within our community and within our users um, for using and getting more acclimated with Aave. If we take a step back, um, rabbit holes is, is really appealing to the users who are trying to get more involved in crypto and in Web3 um, and to become better, better and more knowledgeable citizens of, of the, the Web3 world. And so, um, Partnering with Rabbit Hole and doing quests on Rabbit Hole is a great way to gain exposure, to educate people, um, and to bring in more uh, eager participants and, and owners of the network. So we're extremely happy with, with the way this most recent quest um, with Ave went. We are working with a number of other leading uh, program uh, protocols and communities in the Web3 space. We've worked with Uniswap. We just did a quest this past week um, with Polygon. We're working on stuff with, we've worked on stuff with the graph, pool together, um, all different types of protocols in DeFi, NFTs, layer ones, um, really focused on how to get users more educated and more involved uh, in the leading projects in crypto. And then for the leading projects in crypto like Aave, um, how do we find more users who actually want to use the product? We're not about speculation. Um, we're, we're about finding people who are into using projects, want to be good stewards for your community, want to be active users. Um, and I think moving forward, we'd like to move further and further on. Um, we have, the as a grand vision, um, we, we look at ourselves right now as pioneering learn to earn. So I'm sure... Most people are familiar with Axie Infinity uh, and, and play to earn. Um, you know, you, you earn money for playing in a game. We look at rabbit hole right now as pioneering learn to earn. Um, so you, you earn uh, a protocol's tokens for learning about them and, and most importantly, actually using them. But moving forward, I think what we'd like to get to is participate to earn. And what participate to earn means is moving more and more into rewarding contributions to networks. And so what that might look like moving forward, and we're working on these capabilities and we'd love to continue discussing them with Aave um, and, and through the grants program, but what Participate to Earn looks like more and more is like, how do we actually reward value that's contributed to the network? And so um, what, what that might be is you get rewarded if you've, um, uh, if you've lent a certain amount of money and, and driven a certain amount of yield um, over the over six months period of time. And what that's doing is it's incentivizing real sustained contributions, real value provided to the network. And Rabbit Hole can be the place 
where you incentivize and reward those um, reward those things. Rabbit Hole has, as I mentioned, an extremely eager set of users who love to participate in Web3, um, who are constantly learning and upscaling uh, and can be a really good partner for Aave as Aave thinks about new things that they'd like to incentivize and reward, whether that's launching on a new protocol like we recently did with Aave and Polygon um, or, or whatever that might be. Um, Rabbit Hole can be the place where protocols go uh, to find new participants, incentivize them, make sure that they're the right participants. We offer the ability to filter based on different skills. We offer civil protection. So you know that your every user you get is actually a unique human and um, can be a strong partner in helping Aave strengthen their community moving forward. Um, as I mentioned, had a we're really pleased with the excitement from our rabbit hole community about the Aave quest we did a few weeks ago and look forward to, to more and more hopefully successful ventures down the line. Awesome. Thank you so much for that awesome intro, Ben. And uh, just so uh, people know how to get in touch with you, what is the best way to uh, learn more? Yeah, if you'd like to reach out to me personally at Ben Schechter on Twitter, um, but for Rabbit Hole, uh, you can go to rabbithole.gg uh, and complete our quest, uh, credential yourself through our skills. If you've uh, done different actions on chain, um, we provide credentials for that, which can then be used to unlock new opportunities, unlock new quests in the future, and to dive further into uh, being a, a Web3 user and citizen. Amazing. Thank you so much, Penn. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Great. So with that, we are ready to move on to our last talk of the day. So we've already spent the past few hours talking about how each of the different grant programs are structured and how everything has evolved so far. And you've also even now seen a showcase of some of the incredible projects that the Aave Grants has, uh, has funded. Um, but to kind of really sum it all up, um, I want to do this last panel on uh, what does it mean to successfully receive a grant from Ave, and how do you actually uh, go from applying to the finish line? And uh, having this discussion will be Shreyas and Nimran, who will help out with the Ave grants program, um, and uh, I'll let them jump in directly. So welcome back, uh, Shreyas and Nimran, and I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Kartik. Hey, Shreyas, hey, how are you? Hey, man, I'm good. Great. Um, you know, like, we, you know, we've been working with each other for quite some time now, and there's just a lot of learnings, um, both from, you know, working with other DAOs and working with all of the new participants that are applying for Aave grants. And, um, and, and there's been many questions that have come up, at least for me, when, when I'm talking to the recipients. And one, one question I get very commonly is, um, what are the right ideas or what are the right opportunities for Aave and other protocols? And how should I be using my resources to help, let's say Aave is an example. And so maybe we could start with that and then we can start to think about the design space and the process and then how we think about grants moving forward. Yeah, it's a good question. I think um, the, the number one thing is, um, is just something that benefits Aave. And it, it seems simple, but, um, but, but because of the nature of, um, of open source contributions and, and and the types of projects that that can apply, like you know, there's, there's startups, there's um, there's uh, you know, there's sort of a, a general like public good type contribution. Uh, there can just be a lot, and and I think um, at, at the very least, this like your project should benefit Aave in some way. And what that means is it can benefit Aave users. Um, so you know, like Janal Network built something that uh, saves uh, you, you know user Aave users from costly liquidations it could benefit like sort of governance contributors. And so, you know, making the governance interface easier or improving, um, yeah, sort of streamlining the governance process in some way. It could help, um, uh, set, you know, RV protocol directly. So like increasing TVL, uh, bringing like sort of stable kind of liquidity to RV. Um, uh, or yeah, it could it could have help the general like DAO, so, so like setting up a you know a, a DAO, a, a sub DAO that, that focuses on on risk or treasury or 
uh, or something else. And so I, I would say um, at the, to, to start off, like, you know, um, a bunch of projects kind of get ruled up because, um, because they don't seem to be benefiting our way in some way. And, and, uh, and, you know, like it doesn't mean that like the project should should go on to, to do other things. It's just it's just that um, the benefit to Aave shouldn't be like a really, really small tangential thing. It should be something that's kind of a focus with the grant. Um, and so I, I would say, um, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't overcomplicate like, um, you know, just what, like, hey, what's the best thing that Aave needs? And like, you know, where we, of course, have RFPs on our site and there's some things we prioritize, like like the governance UI and the developers DAO. Uh, but I, I would say that you know the the problem is is more like basic than that where, where you know a lot of projects um, are are building something that that might be really really useful and and actually you know a valuable either public good or a valuable startup but it feels like the the Aave benefit is um, is really forced or like non existent or it's just like a side note um, and so uh, yeah uh, that's probably how I'd answer it. Thank you, um, and you've touched on some interesting things um, which I'll talk about it in a bit. But one point that I wanted to make earlier uh, with our conversation with Robert Leshner, Stanny, um, was the fact that accessibility it has been an interesting play into how grants are being processed. Um, you know, previously, you know, like Web2, uh, you could think about these grants are effectively like venture funds or venture investments to seed like new ideas. Now, the rate of uh, seeding new ideas is exponentially growing because of all the grants that that's out there. And so accessibility, and then you have, um, Kind of the rate of speed of how we're supporting these newer founders or developers into the ecosystem. Um, and so how are you seeing that landscape? And are you talking to people from all over the world? How, what does your day-to-day -day look like from that perspective? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think there's definitely, um, I, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of uh, diverse like uh, developer and other like con con contributor activity, uh, more so than I, I would say, you know, in, in, tra in, the, in the traditional like venture type ecosystem and so um you know one one reason for that is just uh you know like the 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 nature of crypto like crypto generally is is attracted like all sorts of people from from um sort of the non-traditionally credentialed uh, backgrounds and and that extends to these grants programs as well um the other element of, of crypto is like the pseudonymous component like um Symphony Finance, uh, the Garden Abbey Grant, a fully pseudonymous team, and we we you know did some sort of KYC um, verification, but uh, but yeah, that's sort of kept private, and it's it's a fully pseudonymous team that can apply that. It's quite hard in in um, in sort of in the traditional world, um, and uh, yeah, the, the grants are from pretty much all over. Like um, you know, I've spoken to a bunch of teams um, in uh, across Europe uh, in. In you know there's the Vietnam team, there's a bunch of teams in India, teams in the U.S., um, in Canada, like so. So pretty much from all over. Actually, not thinking of it, it'd be cool to to do some yeah like a a pie chart of, of these applicants um and, and the the folks we're funding too. Uh, but yeah, I, I I'd say it's pretty much from all over. Like I would say you know I would like to see um uh yeah maybe. Uh, maybe more focused, at, like maybe more like uh, sort of female applicants, um, and uh, you know, there's definitely areas maybe we can do a better job just in terms of uh, outreach. Uh, Maggie's from Shifai, maybe maybe some collaboration there or something. Um, but uh, but yeah, in terms of geographic um, distribution, I think it, it's it's like you know pretty much from all over the place. Maybe the the only restriction is, you know, you, you do have to apply for the grant in English. And so there's, there's probably, you know, some areas that are restricted that way. But um, outside of that, like, you know, we're, we're quite, uh, we're quite, quite open and accessible to like, um, you know, pretty much all types of contributions. And, and this includes like, you know, we're, we're, we're focused a lot on, on developer um, uh, projects versus like more community oriented ones. Um, um, the, though the, the, the bunch of them that are really interesting. I think as we um, ex expand our budget, uh, you know, pending like governance approval and everything, uh, we, we would like to, you know, uh, focus more on this culture and community bit. Um, um, but yeah, I, I think, I think for, for now, the, the focus has been on, on these developer projects, but there's of course like many more skills that you can apply, including like uh, sort of an analysis, com community, you know, culture, like, uh, you know, the stuff you could do in the NFT world um, uh, that we can fund through Abi Grant. So, uh, would like to do more of that um, as we as we have more more money to fund these projects. 
And um, what's also very interesting is um, I'm starting to see more and more of this within just like when we're interviewing applicants is the fact that some of them don't even have Web3 experience, right? And they want to contribute in, in, in traditional sense, like the Web2 world. I, I know we've seen like the a mobile app that's being proposed to build for Aave. I've seen dashboards, risk analysis that are being proposed by Web2 founders. Um, and that's very interesting because like I know Kartik and ETH Global team has done a great job of bringing in like high quality developers into the Ethereum ecosystem. And now we're starting to see grants playing a part in that, which is, which I thought was a like an indirect yeah. effect. So what are your what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's really cool because I think um, I think it's actually a, a really good um, onboarding for people. Uh, in in fact, I, I would you know uh, just like I would recommend someone uh, who has some like web two experience to just like do a hackathon at at uh, ETH Global or Gitcoin and and like you know make your, make your way through. I, I would I would include. Ave grants is as one of them, you know, along with with um, uni and comp grants. Like I, I think um, it's it's a really cool way that you can if you don't know if you don't know at all what what to do, just like look you know look at the RFPs and that there's something that you'll be able to fulfill with your skill set. Um, and uh, I actually recommended this with, to a few friends who have um, who wanted to uh, kind of just get their hands dirty and in getting into crypto. I actually think that's one of the advantages of a, of a grants program. It seems very simple simple and straightforward that, that you you have this application you you can actually apply and you can you can you can like do something concrete and you can get funded for it um it's it's actually um it, it's very useful for like a large swath of people like most people actually aren't um uh, sort of that uh comfortable just like getting in front of a DAO and like you know j- just proposing what they want to do and uh you, you have to be a sun type of person which um uh, you know, quite quite forthcoming and, and extroverted, uh, and and you know, willing to say what you know, uh, just just take initiative, and even when you don't know what who it's like, sort of, sort of just push something forward, uh, which I think is is a very useful thing too. Um, but but I think grants are very useful for like you know, a bunch of people who kind of want a more private, I think, uh, application. If you're rejected, you're rejected privately. It's not this like sort of public facing. Um, uh, DAO that's, re- that's rejecting you. There's also a way to um, to just like you know, get, like a lot of times the rejection is in uh, it's just something they can tweak or like you know maybe 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 it's not it's not a fit now because of what, what we're focusing on or something. Uh, but but uh, it's it, it's the relationship is is still there and can continue. Um, and so yeah, I, I would say um, it, it's it's definitely you know one of those like really um, uh, uh, one of those things I, w- I would say. That that a, a web two person should um you know should should consider applying for one of these DeFi grants to, to get in. Uh, I would also say like you know it's um uh you know what once you once you do one of these like it just um you know you can you can then go on to like work you know work for the developers now or like you know work for our company you know it, it's a, it's a really cool like like almost career path and it's not gonna I don't know how long it's gonna last because you know we're at at the stage where you know, we we know every every grant that, that's been funded. It, it's not, um, you know, it, it's not sort of that. It, we have a lot of inbound, but it's not that overwhelming. And and so, uh, each of these projects get a lot of, I think, attention and and are noticed. And you know, um, and so that, that that's really cool too. And I would like to, I think, expand our um, uh, like sort of reach and ability to to you know do this more where where we can. Um, you know, I actually be more targeted. I was speaking to the blockchain and Berkeley folks uh, earlier today, and and you know, there's there's probably ways we can we can coordinate with with some of the university groups to um, you know to 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 sort of source uh, sort of d- developer work and talent that way. Uh, there's definitely more more we, we can sort of um, uh, push from, from our side, but from from the inbound perspective, like I, I definitely think um, you know that there's there's a lot of people who fit that category of like you know they're not they're not like solidity devs with a lot of experience they they just like you know they're, they're, they're iterating and and figuring their way out and and um and the grants is like a you know good safe space to do that yeah um and i want to touch on a, a very interesting point uh this happened many times throughout just like the crypto the like crypto history which is like high quality founders will or you know people that want to become entrepreneurs will find any way to get access to funding so they can seed their idea. And this is for all the developers that are listening today. I mean, I, like I, I give you like a clear example of uh, the one inch team and how they built 
uh, the first iteration of one inch at an ETH Global Hackathon or Salme and, and, and team at ETH San Francisco and ETH India. And so like, a part of like, like, you know, for founder, like people that are aspiring to be founders, you know, seed your idea, right? You have this great opportunity. There's so many grants that are available to you. And there's just a lot you could do with Dave ecosystem and, and others. And so like for potential founders, this is like a great opportunity. And maybe Shriya is maybe highlighting, like, have you, like, wh what were some of the success stories been like um, for, for those that received grants from, from us at Ave? <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I just want to add, add comment on that, and I, I want to add in addition to um to to like the 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 money to um yeah basically you know without diluting yourself you're you're getting uh, some some capital to to basically build something and and learn and iterate and experiment. Uh, you also have like um I think a, a community that um that that's you're almost like taking along with your project and so if, if you're if you're if you're building something you know alongside um Aave or you you focus on one or two protocols and, and you're really like sort of tailoring or integrating with them um you you have their sort of uh, support i think uh which is very useful especially if if you you know you're a you're a, a project without um uh, sort of any um any visibility like it's it's cool to have that initial um, um, backing and integration to like then do other things, um, and so that, that's a that's I think a value add that I've I've seen um, you know, some projects comment on. Uh, in terms of yeah, the the success um, success stories like you know pretty much like a lot of the the grants for funding are are really useful and important things, and uh, the main the main thing is just to actually ship it and execute it, and and if if like. 100% of projects do that, like, you know, all of them would be, you know, really, really great and useful in different ways. Um, and so in terms of the ones that that have, uh, you know, Gelato comes to mind, they, they ship really quickly and uh, they built this, this, you know, useful solution to, um, uh, to, to prevent users from these costly liquidations. I think they, um, uh, they, they had a lot of background on the like solidity uh, and smart contract side, but, but um, I think they, Use another group's help to build a build a UI, um, and so you know they they were just like sort of hacky and quick and and uh, build something. Um, the the Symphony Finance did just um, went public, I think, on uh, launched their beta on Polygon, um, and so you know they're really cool too. Like they, they're building, um, you know, basically a, a way to uh, unyield with limit orders. I think th there's. Um, uh, Omni Analytics was another one where you know they kind of like took over the um, the the sort of uh, analytics uh, function from you know, some of the stuff that that Aave company was doing, and uh, we we actually wanted um, like an Aave grants like the analytics grant that they they're helping manage. Uh, they 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 put put together some really cool analytics on. Um, Aave on Polygon on, on Dune, and and they're also I think building a, a separate dashboard in R because um, uh, you know Dune is is limiting in some ways, um, and so you know the the way I describe success is honestly like completing what, what the, the, the 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 scope grant that, that these projects have laid out, and and a few that, that there are definitely more that um, that have completed it successfully, but I'd say you know just just doing that is is a um, you know, big enough step because uh, big, big, some of, some of these projects are uh, like ambitious, uh, but but all of them are like you know quite useful to the ecosystem, um, which is why you know why we're we're funding it. So um, you know, there's a wide spectrum of of things from um, sort of yeah analytics to uh, some more ambitious projects, say like um, you know, uh, build bringing zero collateral loans to Aave or something like that. That you know is more ambitious and will take more time and has more steps. Uh, but yeah, like our, our approach from from Avi grant side is, you know, if 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 the if the project has a higher, uh, you know, grant size, we just we just split into multiple milestones, but we don't shy away from from funding those. It's just that we need to make sure that the execution can can actually be done, and and there's clear uh, there's a clear roadmap to to that. And I guess we're almost at time, but one final question is, um, how easy or hard is it to apply for for Aave and get and receive a grant? Yeah, it's uh, very straightforward to apply. It should be like fifteen minutes to finish the application, um, and uh, you know the the, um, the the you know there's no like trick questions or something. Like it's quite straightforward. You just say what what you're working on. Uh, what one like one thing to keep in mind is again like 
like clearly outlined the like why why you're applying to the to the RV grant, like you know, the benefit to RV, the RV system or, or users or, or the community in some way. Um, and then uh, we'll um, we'll get back to you with uh, uh, you know if it makes sense to, to schedule um, uh, an interview with one of the grant reviewers and then uh, yeah and, and then you know after the interview um, the, the interview will basically you know if if there's any feedback to to the other uh, uh, grant staff members will will um, ask for feedback but then you know besides that you know we should we should get back to you. Um, uh, with the decision soon, I, I, uh, the the only constraint is we like to batch things together. So, um, so you know, we, we'd like to send sort of like uh, maybe ten uh, decisions together. So you, it might just be a little weird to just batch them together. But yeah, besides that, it should be quite straightforward to um, you know apply. Um, and yeah, like we you know if if, if for some reason we we think um, you know the, the project can be tweaked tweaked in some way to. Uh, make it better suited or, or maybe the grant amount is too exorbitant and, and there's some there's a smaller amount that makes sense like we'll definitely let you know uh, and it's not you know it's even even the interview like it's sort of meant to be a conversation to, to understand just uh you know what, what you're building like um you know it's some some evidence that like you know you you actually execute on this um and then yeah what, why it's why it's useful to the rv system um and that's that's pretty much like you know a summary of things and we'll have Maybe specific questions on on the direction you're taking or something. Cool. Oh, well, Shreyas, thank you so much. Um, I'll pass it over to Kartik um, for the final. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that was an incredible chat. I I, um, I feel like Shreyas already has a whole pitch prepared for this thing, but I'll just ask you the the uh, kind of closing sort of piece of it. How can people get involved? Uh, what's the next uh, takeaway and uh, just everything around it? Yeah, uh, thanks, Karthi. This is great. Uh, I do want to like shout out like you know a, a bunch of uh, our grants members. Um, you know, Imran has done an amazing job with with um, you know, quite, especially coordinating with events besides um, besides reviewing uh, grant applications. Um, I'm gonna miss out some people, but yeah, like you know, uh, Nick from from Gauntlet has, has done a terrific job. Uh, Alex, uh, you know, a bunch of others from, from the grant staff. So um, you know, we definitely want to. Um, uh, you know, shout out to them. We're we're, we're farming the developers now. Uh, Carbon page from our team is leading that, and and so uh, if if anyone has an interest in basically being being part of uh, you know a small group that's actually you know working directly for uh, Ave Dao and being involved in core development, uh, it's a really cool opportunity. It's I think probably the only opportunity in in um, in in like you know among the large DeFi protocols where you can. Uh, directly work for the DAO and and um and and be part of something you know quite quite unique. So, uh, would would recommend uh applying there. It should be on on the avigrants.org website. I'd say um uh in terms of applying for a grant, like you know we're we're we just accept things rolling. And so you know if you have anything that you think could improve the AV ecosystem, uh you know AV AV users, the community, you know, feel free to apply. Uh, the application is short, should be like fifteen minutes and. Uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to me or um, you know, uh, so DM the Avi Grants Twitter account or something. Um, but yeah, I think that you know, should should cover it. Like I, I also want to yeah thank I guess the, the the projects that have applied and and built things. You know, it's it's it definitely is quite like inspiring and energizing. Like the the Avi community is really um, yeah it's it's there's just a lot of a lot of experimentation and, and uh, openness I think of of, of the culture. So. Um, you know, definitely, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of want to continue to support those projects and um, and new ones as well. And and we'll we'll try to build our our um, process out such that you know, folks who, who have done a good job in the in the in these first rounds of grants, like you know, are you know, get, get some way that they can be involved in the ecosystem and um, and, and you know continue to um, to, to have their their sort of reputation carry within the community. So. Um, but yeah, th thanks, thanks, Karthik. Uh, if, yeah, if, and and yeah, people can just reach out on on Avi Grant's uh, Twitter or or DM me at uh, hello Shreyas if, if they have anything. Amazing. I just want to make sure that uh, I get to thank you because you give a shout out to everybody, but uh, you're also a big part of that whole process and ecosystem. So uh, um, thanks for kind of helping out with everything, and uh, thanks for an amazing. Uh, set of talks today and uh, talking about all the insights from structuring the other grants um, and everything that's next.
Awesome. Thank you. I uh, really had a great time. Thanks, everyone. Amazing. Well, thanks everybody for watching in. And I want to give also a, a really big a special shout out to Bill Zero X for uh, just really being uh, super uh, amazing on the chat here, just giving all the additional context from all the things that we're talking about in chat. So Bill, keep uh, keep doing that. Um, and uh, also everybody sign up for the Ave News uh, Substack. So uh, with that, I want to close this off today and uh, we'll all see you on Discord with the rest of the hackathon. And for those of you who are interested in governance and DAOs, we'll see you tomorrow again at 12 p.m. Eastern on eClobal.tv for the Governance and DAO Summit. So happy, happy, uh, happy hacking, everybody, and uh, enjoy some uh, lo-fi beats in, in the meantime. Take care.